please tell me you're joking. I seriously don't know what you're talking about. I fed humans to demon birds. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, did you not realize how goofy that sounds? Just like, I fed humans to demon birds. Oh. Warning. This game contains content that might not be suitable for most audiences. Viewer's discretion is advised. Hey there, Snowflake. Before I begin the story, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. Would you like to play as Aspen, the canon protagonist, or would you rather self-insert? If you choose to play as Aspen, the pronouns will be set to they, them, and their sprite will be shown next to the text box whenever they're th talking or thinking. So, which option do you prefer? Ah, uh, what a self-insert! But, oh, Aspen will be so cute, though! Ah, uh, I am a self-insert! But I, uh, yeah, screw it! I'll play as Aspen. I'll play as Aspen. You have chosen to play as Aspen. Can't wait to meet you, Aspen. The road is quiet. No real sound can be heard except for the humming of my four-wheeled companion. No sign from any other cars in hours, not even a motorbike. The frosty air is so prominent. I can feel it pierce through the window's glass. Bless whoever invented car heaters. Yeah. I don't know why I suddenly grabbed my backpack for a one-week trip to Frost Peak Town. I mean, I know it's supposedly famous for skiing or whatever, but it's literally in the middle of nowhere. What am I? A teenager hungry for a thrill? Who am I kidding? I know exactly why I'm doing this. Screw my work! Screw my boss! Screw society! can burn each other for all I care. I'm not usually this impulsive. But winter sports might just be what I need to take my mind off things. And no one's gonna take me away from my well-earned break. No one. What the? In the middle of my venting session, a crow flies right in front of the windshield. Ah! Although I nearly lose control, I managed to get a firm hold of the steering wheel. Damn bird. Is it... Ah, uh, is it suicidal or what? Nearly killed me. Whatever. I'll just... Huh? The car seems weirdly off balance all of a sudden. Really? Now? Here? Ah. Uh, damn it! God damn, Herbie. You're looking a little flat over there. Your parent is so irresponsible, they forgot to bring you a spare tire. I take my phone from my pants pocket. No reception. Of course. No one is going to take your well-earned breakaway, huh, Aspen? Well, stupid crow just did. I kicked the snow. <sighs> as much as complaining feels good to get your frustrations out of your chest, it's not going to solve anything. Time to explore the wondrous world of Winter Wonderland. Right. Now, where would I go if my car had a problem? A gas station? Yeah, if only. There's literally nothing here. Nothing but snow and big trees. Frosty Town should be somewhere around this area, though. I just need to keep walking. At least the view is pretty. Man, where am I? Well, the trees have changed. I guess that's some progress. The others were pines, right? Not sure about these ones, though. But still, how come I haven't seen a single person or animal throughout my entire hike? Don't bears usually live here? Now that I want to meet one. Hope I don't find one of their dens while they're hibernating. Yeah, I'm surprised I didn't see any deer either, considering there was a sign and all. Is it me or is it getting colder? Guess I'll keep walking. Okay, nah, it's definitely colder now. My hands feel like ice cubes, and of course I had to forget my freaking gloves. Putting them in my pockets does nothing either. Ugh. What? Sure enough, the freezing weather brings out the first snowflake of the day. They fall slowly, yet relentlessly, 
but I can't resist the urge to catch a few with my tongue. I wish they tasted like something. Usually I don't mind, though. It's undeniable that the tiny ice crystals are very pretty. Especially when it's sunny, it's as if everything is glistening. Not to mention, snow has a strange way of making you feel nostalgic, even if you've never seen it before. Yep, I definitely don't mind it. You can even say I like it. But I know I'm not at risk of getting hypothermia, that is. What's next? A snowstorm? Let me guess. It is a snowstorm. It is a snowstorm! <laughs> Great! Is that a uh, log cabin? Maybe whoever lives there can help me. Or not. I am having such bad luck today. I wouldn't be surprised if it was abandoned. My bad it can protect me from the storm, though. Yeah, I hope. Never mind. I don't want to be alone in the cold. Let me see another human being. Hello? Is anyone in there? Please. I need help. No answer. Maybe they didn't hear me. My car got a flat tire and I have nowhere to go. Can you help me? Please. My hands are numb and have turned a deep shade of purple. My body is shivering so violently I can barely stand. Oh, hell, it's, it's cold. The front door starts unlocking. Yeah. Am I okay? I don't think I'm okay. Yeah. Uh. I wake up in an unfamiliar room. Where am I? Is this inside the log cabin? I must have passed out. What time is it? Did I sleep the whole night? Out of habit, I touch my pants pocket to take out my phone. What the? Only to find I'm wearing an entirely new outfit. Huh. I guess whoever helped me out must have changed my clothes. I even bandaged my hands. Yeah, I should go find them. Whoa. This cabin is bigger than it looks. How many rooms does it even have? The door at the far back must be the entrance. I hear a bit of noise from the room on the right. Is that where the person who helped me is? Then again, I don't know who they are. Uh, what if it's someone dangerous? Well, not like I have the keys anyway. I should meet them before drawing any conclusions. Also, they did help me, so they can't be that bad. Horror game main characters must be rubbing off on me. When I enter the room, I find myself in a small, yet cozy kitchen. And then I see him. The green-haired man who appears to be of average stature, wearing a lab coat and... Washing the dishes? That's kind of anticlimactic. Huh? Hi! That, I said it out loud! Yeah, now he's staring at me. Yeah! He looks... kind of different. I like it. Abort! Abort mission! Maybe if I'm quick enough, I can escape through the window. Oh, hey! You woke up! The man either chooses to ignore my slip-up or doesn't really care. After removing his cleaning gloves, he takes a few steps my way and stops right in front of me. Yeah, I was actually about to check up on you after cleaning up. How do you feel? Uh, yeah, I'm okay. I'm feeling great. Uh, I'm fine, but you shouldn't have changed my clothes. I'm feeling great. I'm actually feeling great. Really? Yeah, I'm glad. Uh, hmm? well, it's just, if it wasn't for you, I don't think I would have survived. You even, uh, you even treated my frostbitten hands at all, so thank you so much. Mister? Uh. Sorry, uh, <laughs> you just caught me off guard. By the way, uh, yeah, I'm sorry about changing your clothes without permission. It was kind of an emergency since you were... Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. I mean, you did what you had to do in that kind of situation. If anything, I'm actually really grateful, because otherwise, I uh, would have probably gotten hypothermia. Or worse. Much worse. Huh. The man gives a sigh of relief. Thank goodness. I can't believe he was worried about what I was going to think when his actions literally saved my life. He's kind of cute, not going to lie. 
If you don't mind my asking, can you tell me what happened? How did you get caught in the snowstorm? Oh, right. What can I say? A stupid crow scared the hell out of me while I was driving and my car got flat tire as a result. Uh, I see. That's quite unfortunate. Did I say something weird? Uh, anyway. I thought I asked for help, but you're literally the first person I've seen in this whole area. Which reminds me, I don't think we've introduced ourselves yet, right? Yeah, that's true. Does he need to pee or something? Why is he suddenly so nervous? Now I'm getting nervous. I better get introductions out of the way. I'm Aspen. Ah, huh, what a pretty name. I'm Crow. Nah. Seriously? <laughs> oh man, no wonder you made a weird face. Don't worry, I only meant the animal. Besides, I doubt anyone who has a job that requires wearing a lab coat is actually stupid. Well, mostly anyway. Now that I need to know that. Uh, I know, I know. I just wasn't expecting to hear my name in quite that matter. Yeah, I bet. In any case, it's nice to meet you, Crow. <laughs> the pleasure's all mine. This guy's so nice. I could ask him if he knows how far I am from Frostbeak Town. Wouldn't be too good to overstate my welcome, after all. Can I ask you something? Huh? Where are my matters? I still haven't offered you anything to drink. It's okay. I don't want to impose. Huh. Nonsense. I finally have a guest. Finally? Yeah, I'll go ahead and prepare some chaga tea. It's very good for the cold weather. Thank you. I have no idea what chaga is, but he seems to know what he's talking about, so... Would you like something to eat as well? Don't be shy now. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Yeah. Well, breakfast sounds wonderful. Are you sure you don't mind? I'd rather not eat anything right now. Actually, breakfast sounds wonderful. Excellent. Thank you so much for this. I appreciate it. <laughs> My pleasure. It's been a while since I last cooked for someone, so I'm excited to know what you think. Ah, it's really sweet of him. Yeah, can't wait. By the way, is there anything you can't eat? Ah, uh, I'm good with anything. Yeah, I'm good with anything. Alrighty. Why don't you wait for me in the living room? It's right next to the kitchen. The living room, huh? I guess with how many doors this hallway has, it makes sense. Still, the cabin doesn't seem that big from the outside. Weird. Yeah, gotcha. Whoa. Crow sure has a lot of books. Maybe he's some kind of scientist. He looks apart, at least. It's pretty cozy, too. Kind of surreal knowing how cold it is outside. After awkwardly wandering about the room for a couple of minutes, I decided to sit on one of the couches. Oh my gosh. I lift my butt and throw myself on the seat cushion a few more times for good measure. So comfy! I wonder if it's tailor-made. The couches sold in Silvering City definitely aren't as comfortable as this one. Well, the ones in Golden Willow in any case. The carpet looks really inviting. Should I take off my boots to feel the fiber texture under my feet? Yes! Do it! I should probably ask first. I don't think that's a good idea. I'm gonna do it! I I'm gonna let my impulsive thoughts win today. Here it goes. It's so soft! I'd love to have one of these at home. Hmm. Having fun? Ah! Crow smirks at me while holding a tray with a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> don't worry. I'm not mad. Quite the opposite, in fact. It makes me happy that you feel right at home. Alright. Whoa! Pancakes! I quickly pick up my fork to give them a taste. Mmm. The fluffy texture of the pancakes, combined with the juiciness of the berries and the floral and sweet taste of honey, sends me right to heaven. So good! Several compliments slip out of my mouth before I even finish swallowing. I can't help it. It's so freaking amazing. <laughs> Looks like someone was hungry. Ah, that's embarrassing. What am I, a kid? Sorry about that. Got a bit excited. Nothing to be sorry about. Yeah, I'm happy you like them so much. They were fantastic. Never had honey this good. What type of honey is it? This is spring wallflower honey. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful how the flavors and color can change so much depending on the time of year it's harvested? Definitely. It also depends on the flowers the bees collect the nectar from. 
That's so cool. I'd love to try other types of honey. If we got the chaga tea, so it'll warm me right up. I take the mug of chaga tea and rest my cheek on the ceramic. It's warm and has an earthy aroma. I've never had chaga tea before. It doesn't smell like anything I've ever tasted. What herb or fruit does it come from? Hmm. Curious, aren't we? Chaga is a type of mushroom that grows on the bark of birch trees. It's a little hard to find and you need to be careful not to confuse it with dead chaga. But it's worth the search since it's very good for you. Whoa, that's kind of cool. Right? Nature is amazing. It sure is. And it's not trying to kill you, that is. I don't want to dampen the mood. He looks happy. I distract myself by taking a sip of tea, but almost choke on the unexpected taste. <coughs> uh, so bitter. Uh, Oops, I forgot to mention that. Here, have some sugar, Snowflake. Snowflake? Uh, protest, blush, give, uh, blush, give him a nickname too. I'm gonna give him a nickname. Thanks, Jewel. <laughs> Oh, he's so cute, Frick! Oh, I freaking love Crow. N no problem. I guess he wasn't expecting that. Crow doesn't seem to mind, though. He even looks happy. How cute. I had two teaspoons of sugar and stir. Better? A lot. Thank you. Maybe the bitter taste will grow on you with time. Yeah, who knows? I wonder if the natural food store near home sells chaga tea. Which reminds me, are you a nature scientist, Crow? Hmm. Oh, curious about me, aren't we? M maybe. <laughs> I like your honesty. Something like that. I prefer to call myself an environmental researcher. Oh, it's pretty cool. Do you have anything you specialize in? Well, nature is pretty vast, so I study a bit of everything. Plants, animals, ecosystems. But right now, I'm researching partial migration in certain animals. Partial? Your face tells me you have a lot more questions. You got me. Partial migration is just like the name suggests. It's a phenomenon where only some individuals of a certain species move from one region to another, while the rest stay put. I see. Kind of like when some birds migrate because of the winter. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. For some reason, the animals who don't migrate during winter tend to be the same ones that who don't migrate the following year and so forth. That's intriguing, isn't it? It really makes you want to know why. Uh... Perhaps it's a bit ironic, but I'm actually focusing on crows right now. Yeah, well, what can I say? It fits you to a T. <laughs> I better do the research justice then. That makes me wonder. Was the crow I saw on the road a partial migrator or not? Hmm. Enough about me. Why don't you tell me more about yourself? Promise you're not gonna laugh? Cross my heart and hope to die. Yeah. All right, all right. To be honest, I need a break. My job back home is really stressful, to say the least. Yeah, I don't know when the last time I took a vacation was. Not a day off, you know? I start to fidget with my fingers. Work's always like, this is urgent, or I need you to be online. Or Jerry screwed up again, now we gotta do overtime. Every day, every hour, everywhere, it's pure chaos. I bend forward. There's just no escape. And bury my head in my hands. I feel so stuck all the time. Like there's no point in anything. Like I'm living to work and not working to live. Like, I want to disappear for an indefinite amount of time and not think about anything. Which is pretty much what I did. Well, partially anyway, because I only took one week off. God, what am I saying to a stranger? Sorry. Got a bit overwhelmed for a second. It's alright, Snowflake. I think it's good that you're letting it all out. He's being so sweet. I almost want to cry, but I feel embarrassed about being so vulnerable with a person I barely know. Call me weird for overthinking this, but it feels so right to talk with him. It feels like I'm really being listened to for the first time. Like he's actually... Like he actually cares. Even when he doesn't know me. I'm not sure why you thought I was going to laugh, though. 
What I see is a very hard-working person who's clearly not being appreciated and needs to relax. And probably be a little pampered, too. I think you were right to take a week off. Hmm. In fact, you should have probably asked for more. Thank you. Though I'm sure Crow noticed my voice breaking, he chooses not to say anything, probably out of kindness. Why don't you tell me more about this vacation of yours? Where were you planning to go? Oh, right. Well, I actually wanted to ask you about it before. Is Frostbeak Town too far away from here? Huh? Did you say Frostbeak Town? Yeah, I was looking for places to visit that were good for relieving stress. Not nah, beaches, mind you. Something to actually let my frustrations out. So I kept searching and found a bunch of articles saying how skiing was really good for all that. Then, let's just say I chose a place that was furthest away from home to feel like I was genuinely going on a trip. This is totally not going badly. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> a bit of a thrill seeker, aren't we? I mean, not really. I guess I need a bit of excitement to take my mind off things. Is that so? How curious. That smile should be illegal. By the way, to answer your last question, Frostbeak Town is around this area. Really? Uh... Yeah. I sense a butt coming. It's a few hours away by car, unfortunately. Oh. There is a bus that takes you there, though. And the bus stop isn't far from here. And again, the snowstorm yesterday did quite a number on the roads. So it'll probably take a while until the snow is removed. They will most likely have to repair the damage too. Ah, freaking hell. Do you know how much time it'll take until the buses resume their usual route? Hmm. About a week, I'm assuming. Ah, damn. There goes my vacation. Guess I'll have to stay in this area then. What about hotels? Are there any around here, Crow? Hotels? Hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. How many people come visit this area? They don't? Not during winter, anyhow. What does that mean? I like Frosty. This village doesn't have any real attractions, per se. Not to mention, only about 11 people live here. Farmers and people with summer vacation houses, to be more precise. Well, and me. Wait, this is a rural area? Or so in the other seasons. It's mostly deserted during the winter since this village is... Not well suited to shelter cattle in such harsh weather conditions. It's most likely the reason why this village is called Winter Hollow. Winter Hollow. Sounds kind of cool, but also a bit ominous. A bit similar to partial migration, don't you think? Now that he mentions it, that must also be why I saw no one on the way here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Frostbeak has a hotel in its town, but... What am I supposed to do then? We don't say anything for a while. This is probably the unluckiest break I've had in a long time. Getting a flat and having no replacement for it, forgetting my gloves when going to such a cold place. Getting caught in a snowstorm in a village that's pretty much deserted, save for one person. Am I cursed or something? Why can't luck be on my side for once? Burnout is the worst. I can't even take a vacation properly. Crow is the first one to break the silence. Why don't you stay here for a few days? Huh? Did I hear him right? <laughs> Why do you look so surprised? Considering there aren't many alternatives, I think it's a good idea, don't you think? I... Well, I... Don't want to impose, I'd love to stay, I'm not sure. I'd love to stay? Like, hell, I, I, I would really love to stay. Really? I'd love to. That's great. Maybe this is a bit silly, but... To be honest, I've always wanted to spend a vacation in a log cabin. Because, I mean, just look at them. And yours. They're so freaking cool. Yeah, don't worry. I'll definitely, uh... Damn it, I did it again. Yeah, sorry about that. I got way too enthusiastic over there. <laughs> don't be sorry. Makes me overjoyed that you like my cabin and want to stay. His enthusiasm is so infectious. I find myself jumping for joy as well. Seems I have a roommate now. Or cabin mate, rather. Thank you, Crow. I mean it. We're going to have so much fun you'll never want to leave. Oh, I believe you. Yeah, stop teasing me or I might just believe you. Yeah, I'll go wash the dishes. Ha! You, you don't have to! Uh... I flashed my palm at him before he finishes his sentence. Nope, you're already letting me stay in your home for a whole week. 
The least I can do is help you with the dishes and a few other things. All right. Good. I'll be right back. I reached the dirty mugs, plates, and teapots on the tray and head back to the kitchen. Crow? I wasn't joking before, Snowflake. About which part? What do you mean? Also, yeah, day two. <laughs> I'm pretty sure none of us were ready for teeth brushing ASMR. <laughs> After waking up from one of the best night's sleeps I've ever had, I made sure to clean myself up in the bedroom. A uh, bathroom. <sighs> Thank God, Crow has so many spare toothbrushes. I guess it makes sense that you need to supply yourself with a whole bunch of stuff if you live in the woods. You can't really make a quick trip to the grocery store, can you? I didn't see a car outside the cabin, though, so maybe he gets everything delivered? The farmers probably sell him some stuff, too. Eh, who knows. Once I'm presentable enough, I make my way to the kitchen. Yeah, I'm greeted with the smell of rice cooking on the stove. And the sound of Crow's masterful skill of cutting veggies at a ridiculous speed. I do not call out to him just yet, or he might cut himself by accident. The moment I move to head to the other room, though, Crow notices me and stops dead in his tracks. Ow! Oh! He leaves the knife on the counter and approaches me. Good morning, Aspen. I was about to go wake you up. Morning. Somehow, this feels a little like deja vu. <laughs> feels a little like deja vu, don't you think? We spoke to each other like this yesterday, too. Actually, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Perhaps this will become something of a daily ritual for us. Ah, lunch will be ready in a little bit, by the way. Wait, lunch? I knew I went to sleep earlier than usual, but still. Did the bath really relax me that much? Jeez, I slept like a log. Hmm. Maybe it's the effect of the... Oh my god, don't! Don't you dare say it! Crow, I swear to god, if you say it, I am going to smooch you! Lock cabin. All right, that's it. Pucker up, lover boy. <laughs> that was terrible. Well, you laughed, didn't you? This cheeky buster. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But honestly speaking, you were under a lot of stress yesterday. It's no wonder you slept so much. If anything, isn't it a good thing? Imagine your job doesn't let you rest very well. You're not wrong there. Anyway... You need help with the food. Don't worry about it. It's almost done. You can help me by setting the table in the living room. If you want. Sure. I'll go ahead and do that then. Thank you. Hmm. One set table later, I wait for Crow by sitting on the two-seater couch. But not for long. The neatly arranged bookshelves in a corner room catch my eye once again. All of them are hardcovers. All of them have spines with no titles. Books that look a bit worn out, faded, but not to the point where you can say they're old. But just that they were read several times. I gotta lie, I'm really curious about his collection. What does Crow like to read? Before I change my mind and check it out, I grab a reddish book from one of the shelves. It's the only one with a vibrant color. Let's see. Winter Ecology. Living in the cold. Well, that's fitting, alright. We've all heard about... Ecology at least once. Now it studies the interrelationships between living things and their environment, and it strives to explain the behavior of assorted species around the world. It is vast. It is ever-changing. How much does it truly change in the realm of winter? Recent discoveries have shown the incredible strategies that living things have implemented in order to pull through the cold climates. This, in turn, reinforces the fact that we are all connected. All connected? Back to the question. How much is truly necessary to survive? The sound of Crow's footsteps distract me from going any further. Wait, 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 what did I just say? Oh, I was just surprised. Okay. I, uh, quickly put the book away, decide to come clean, keep the book right with me. I am going to fess up and keep it with me. Yeah, I'm not going to put it back. It's just a book. No big deal. If I want to read it, right? Besides, he did say I could make myself at home. <laughs> the Anya the face, I swear to God. Thanks for waiting. <laughs> Crow stares at the book in my hands. That's... Uh... Did that one in particular catch your eye? Yeah. 
Just in case, I inspect the hardcover from all sides. Is there anything I'm missing? Sorry, was this one off limits? No, not at all. It's, uh, well, I just thought it seemed interesting. Crow? Thank you. Wait a minute. Did you write this? Uh... It's not quite finished yet. I actually grabbed the one that's a work in progress. Yeah. Oh? It's kind of cute seeing him embarrassed. Yeah, I was hoping he'd keep working on it this week. That's amazing, Crow. I'm sure you'll do great. Thank you. By the way, if you're interested, I can show you some of my favorites later. Many of these books have taught me a lot about what I know today. There have been some especially brilliant scientists throughout history. Sure, that'd be nice. I have to ask, though. Yeah, how can you tell all of these apart? There's nothing written on their spines or even the front. Hmm. Ah, each book has a number and a symbol assigned to it, depending on the topic. Yeah, I like to keep them organized in this matter, since the Texas hardcovers look more aesthetic and neat. Well, you're certainly dedicated, that's for sure. <laughs> Never thought of it that way, but guess you got a point. I doubt I do it with my own bookshelves, though. Too annoying to keep track of what's what. Let's eat, shall we? Crow places our lunch on top of the placemats I previously saw on the wooden table. Don't mind if I do. It looks so good! I love salmon rice! You do? I'm glad! Yeah, I'll be sure to remember that. Wasting no more time and before I end up salivating all over my clothes, I wolf down the meal with gusto. Ah, oh, Every flavor is so rich! Oh god, the, smook the smoky and juicy salmon, the fluffy and buttery rice, it's impossible to keep a smile off my face. I love food! That was delicious! <laughs> a happy success then. Hell yeah! Once you finish eating, Crow starts piling up the dishes, as if it was the most natural thing in the world. Wait, Crow. Huh? Don't you remember what I said yesterday? I'll take care of that. But... Crow looks to the side, but he still doesn't let go of the dishes. Alright, time for plan B. Look, we don't have to wash them right away. Can't we just talk a little more? Yeah, definitely! With this, he finally sits back down on the sofa. And he told me I should relax. Can he not see the irony? What would you like to talk about? Well, I feel like we talked a lot about me yesterday. I'm interested in knowing more about this place. Do you have a TV? Maybe the news could tell me some more info about the weather and such. Ah. Crow fidgets with his hands. Yeah, I'm sorry, Snowflake. I don't really watch TV anymore, so I didn't bother to bring one when I moved here. Though I admit, I miss watching Net Talks and Nature Planet. It's okay. Honestly, I'm pretty much the same in that regard. I mean, who even watches TV anymore other than Netflix and other streaming services? Still, never hurts to us, am I right? That's true. Also, you moved here? Did you have did you have me fooled all along and are actually a city boy? <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm in my 30s, so hardly a boy. And frankly, I don't know much about a city either. I'm from another village that's west of Winter Hollow. Oh, don't tell me. Frostpeak Town? Frostpeak is a beautiful place to live, but nah. I moved from a village called Ver uh, Veritas Falls, even further to the west. That's a pretty name. What kind of place is it? Crow breaks eye contact and sighs. He leans against the back of his seat and supports his elbow on the sofa's arm before... Resting his chin on his hand. A little boring, to be honest. Not much to do. I see. It looks a bit uncomfortable. I should change the topic. By the way, I know you say you don't have a TV, but what about Wi-Fi? I noticed I didn't have any reception on my phone, but maybe if I connect to your Wi-Fi. Girl looks at me as if I've grown three heads. Why? Wall dry? You're definitely not a city boy. Uh, Some things have difficult names, alright? I'm willing to bet nature has names that are even more complicated. Huh? You think so? Of course a nature nerd would say that. Uh, anyway, don't worry about it. Back to the topic. Wi-Fi is the wireless connection to the internet. It's very convenient, but I guess it's not really necessary if you only have one device. Uh... You don't have internet either, right? I'm sorry. I do know what it is though. It's just not really for me. I'm not very good with the kind of technology. The most I'm willing to do is have an electric generator. At least you're not a crypto bro, thank god. Hey, it's okay. 
Sure, internet is convenient, but I think it's really admirable that you're really hands-on with your research. If anything, I wish I could be less addicted to social media and otaku culture. Right? There are just so many things you have to see for yourself. And reading things from the internet doesn't hit quite the same feeling as the texture of paper in your hands. Yeah, well, I've always loved to smell of books. Me too! Oh, it's getting dark out already. Before we know it, it's already evening and we spend most of the day talking about various topics. I have to say it, I'm getting more and more interested in Crow's research. You think I could help you with it? Like, when you go outside and observe nature or forage for stuff. Huh? You'd like to accompany me? Are you kidding? This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Sure, lots of people go skiing, but not everyone can say they've been studying winter ecology with a bona fide specialist. Well, I certainly wouldn't mind. It'll be nice to finally have some company. There are things books can teach. You have to see them for yourself. Hmm. But we have to go tomorrow morning. Winter days are much shorter, after all. The sky's already turning dark. Yeah, that's totally fine. I wouldn't want to be alone in the dark either way, especially given how I got caught in a s snowstorm merely two days ago. It's getting a bit chilly. Should we make some tea? Yeah, let me wash the dishes first. With Crow right by my side, I pick up the plates and take them to the sink. Uh, it still makes me a bit queasy making you wash the dishes. You're a guest. Come on, it's no big deal. Have you never di divided household chores with anyone? Not really. I manage on my own for most of my life. I know his experience is probably not the same as mine. I know it, and yet... I can't help but feel like I can relate. Do you ever feel lonely? Lonely? Lonely, huh? Huh. <sighs> not anymore. Hey, yo! I quickly ran down to grab the broken pieces. Ah! And, uh, but unintentionally cut the palm of my hand in my haste. Ah! <sighs> Just gotten a heal from Frostbite too. Aspen! Sorry, Crow. I broke your... I don't care about the stupid plate! Instead of waiting for an answer, Crow grabs my wrist and puts my hand under the faucet. <sighs> Still bleeding! With vigor and precision, he lathers up my hands with green herbal soap until there's no signs of red. This seems to calm him down a little, since he's no longer grating his teeth. But he doesn't let go of my hand. Uh, Crow, I think I'm alright now. You can let go. No, not yet. I don't dare interrupt him again, so I stare at him while he gets a hold of a first aid kit and takes out a small round container. Don't worry, it won't sting. He opens the lid, draws the finger at the creamy ointment and rubs it over my wound. It has a minty fragrance. Finally, he covers it with a gauze. Ah. <sighs> Honestly... Be more careful, won't you? It wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll be more careful. <laughs> That's a good bean. Yeah, I don't think I should tell him I got hurt because he caught me off guard in the first place. Thanks, Crow. I, uh, we're about to have some tea, right? Yeah, I'll make you some tea. All right. Great! Anything to get me out of this awkward conversation? Nothing will come between us. Crow, where's all this coming from? Nothing. No person, no animal. Not even a pesky wound. I'll make sure of it. <laughs> I know that's meant to be menacing or something, but it's like, it's, it's kind of goofy seeing that happen. Oh, Lord. Day three. What the? Oh, am I texting or something? Come on, come on. For the hundredth time in a row, I look at the upper left corner of the screen. Nothing. I met with the same no service text, almost like it's mocking me. Ugh. Really? The only thing I can confirm by charging my phone is the time. I already know I'm pretty much wasting my vacation. Don't even say it to my face, you dumb rectangle. Great insult skills, Aspen. <sighs> Honestly, it still blows my mind that Crow had no idea what Wi-Fi was. I mean, come on, who mistakes Wi-Fi for Waldry? Are we even from the same planet? It's kind of adorable, though. Plus, he does know what phones and the internet are. Thank God. But of course he doesn't have either. Classic Aspen bad luck. Why was he so serious yesterday anyway? 
I mean, yeah, I was bleeding a little, but it wasn't that bad. Right? Whatever. Let's overthink too much, Aspen. You're doing something fun today. After getting my fill of yards and limb stretching, I approach the wardrobe to choose the clothes I'm gonna wear. Yesterday, Crow and sister I put them inside the drawer so they didn't wrinkle inside my backpack. Huh. <sighs> Speaking of my backpack, I should probably take it with me. It'll come in handy for carrying any wild foods or herbs we come across. All set. About to turn around until I make eye contact with the buddy from the picture on top of the wardrobe. Although I did notice it the first day I came here, I was in the right headspace and the time to actually care. It's pretty cute. I didn't know there were species of snow bunnies. Guess you learn something new every day. When I reach the hallway, Crow is pulling the cords or drawstring bags to close it tightly. The sack looks so full, it looks like it's gonna burst. Damn, you carrying a tent in there? A Aspen, I didn't realize you were up. Rise and shine, am I right? <laughs> Indeed. Good morning, Snowflake. Morning. So, you gonna tell me what you got there? Uh. Yeah, I guess it looks pretty stuffed, doesn't it? Let's see, I packed a lunch, a thermos with hot tea, some tools for forging. <sighs> Reconsidering, I think I should have probably taken some spice into account. Hey now, your sister's got you covered. We can use my backpack to carry our findings. With a self-satisfying snort, I crouch and pat the bag lying at my foot. Crow claps his hand together and grins. Thank you. That'd be a lot of help. Do we have everything we need then? Hmm. Yeah. Are you ready? I raise my hand to the air to show him the winter gloves he gave me yesterday before heading to sleep. I didn't forget them this time. <laughs> so I see. I'm glad they fit you well. Thank you for lending them to me. Huh? Huh? Ah, it's just... They were actually meant as a gift. Wait, really? Uh, thank you. I can accept them. Are you sure I can have them? Uh, thank you. Oh my god, thank you so much. I wasn't expecting anything like this, but I really appreciate it. Glad you like them. Like them? I love them. I see. Even better. You really want me to keep... You really want me to keep you on my mind at all times, don't you? Huh? Because you're starting to succeed. No comment. God, he's so cute. Crow puts on his jacket and slides a drawstring bag over his shoulder. I follow suit with my own ja jacket and backpack. Alrighty. Now we're definitely ready. That we are. He takes his keys from his pants pocket. And unlocks the front door. After you. Oh, I thought I was going to say something out of pocket again. This is going to be like his ritual from now on. Like, you know, we go about our day normally. And then like at the end of the day, he's just going to say something absolutely unhinged. Like, who does that? <laughs> who does that on a daily basis? Once outside in the snow, I glance back at the locked cabin. It's kind of weird to think how a mere three days ago, this was the scene of a blizzard. Right now, it's so... peaceful. The cabin looks kinda old in comparison to the inside. It's an interesting contrast, yet still makes me wonder why it's like that. I'll go lie, before we stepped into the snow, my memory of its outer appearance had still been a bit foggy. Guess that's what a combination of stress, freezing weather, and passing out can do to someone. I feel a hand on my shoulder. Are you okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was just, uh, looking at a cabin. Couldn't really appreciate it the first time because of a snowstorm. Among other things. I see. And? It leave an impression on you. Well, I fiddle with my fingers. It looks a bit, uh, unexpected compared to the inside. You can say the word old, you know. Adam bite. My cheeks turn scarlet. God damn it, I really need to work on my poker face. When I moved here, the inside wasn't much different from the outside. It was just a shabby. This is ancient. Whoa, and you decided to remodel it. That's right. I'm not picky, but I very well couldn't live in a rundown place either. Then, why didn't you remodel the outside too? Was it too expensive? Hmm. Not particularly. I just thought it had a charm of its own. Something that appears to be a certain way at first, but then it takes you aback. An unexpected charm, just like you said. 
You're full of surprises now, aren't you? Oh? Does that mean you're even more interested in me? Uh, yes, maybe, no comment. Yeah. Yes. Uh. You sure can be very bold, huh? I wasn't expecting you to answer so honestly. Well, I can't say. I find you very interesting. Yeah. You're not the only one who can tease, Crow. Uh. I feel like you're full of surprises yourself. Look out, Forrest. Here comes a mind-boggling duo. <laughs> And you say my jokes were bad. Alrighty. Let's get going, yeah? Lead the way. Oh, I am in love with this. The weather is really good today. Very clear and there's moisture in the air. Besides chaga and pine needles, we might be able to get some wintergreen berries if we're lucky. Never heard of wintergreen berries before. What do they look like? Hmm. Well, they're similar to red cranberries. If you put them next to each other, the taste will give away which is which. Really? Is it a different kind of sweetness? Nah, winter green berries have a minty flavor. Minty? Are they still consider berries? I know, right? Another wonder of nature. Man, I would love to experience snow one day. While keeping the conversation going, we continue walking along the snow path for a while. I feel like sharks get a bad reputation because of the movie, you know. Uh, they're more chill than dolphins. Appearances can certainly be deceit. Huh? Crow stops dead in his tracks. What is it? Without saying anything, he takes my hand and leads me to a certain striped tree. I lift my head up and squint to follow the trail of the bark. Then I see it. A blackened mass protruding from the trunk. Is that? I didn't expect it to look like charcoal. <laughs> That's actually a very good comparison. Yeah, I'll show you how to harvest it. Crow puts a sack on the ground and grabs a big knife from inside. He then gains a bit of momentum and jumps towards the birch tree. And here, my friends, is the irrefutable proof that humans are related to monkeys. Thank you for coming to our net talk. <laughs> we both laugh. Yeah, I'll be right there with you. Without wasting any more time, Crow reaches the charcoal mass and cuts off a small portion. Finally, he slides out and joins me on the solid ground. This is a chaga mushroom. I lean in towards the fungus. I like the black mass exterior. The core is a completely different color. Wow, it's really orange. <laughs> it is, isn't it? That means this one's healthy. There we go. Oh, right. Let me carry it in my bag. Thank you. Snowflake. Alrighty. Just a little bit longer, and then we'll have lunch. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. Excellent. When we reach the side of the forest filled with pine trees, non-toxic pine trees, that is, Crow grabs a knife in his bag to carefully cut off some of the needles. Once he finishes putting them inside a small pouch, we sit down on a couple of nearby stumps. At last, a place to rest my legs. Yeah. Walking on snow is more tiring than it looks. Feels good, though, don't you think? When I turn to look at him, Crow has me a thermos lid filled with golden-colored drink. The little herbs floating on the top gives it away. This pine needle tea. I keep it in my head for a few seconds, then take a sip. Unlike Chaga, this tea is more aromatic and has a minty, slightly citrusy flavor. Yeah, it does feel good. Thanks, Crow. I drink the rest of the tea. My body feels warmer now. I think I like this one better than Chaga. It's very refreshing, isn't it? You can have more if you want. Maybe in a few minutes. I'm starving. Yo! <laughs> right on the dot. Does your stomach have a clock or something? You were saying? Uh. Anyway... Trying and failing not to look too embarrassed, Crow takes out a couple of toasted sandwiches from a plastic container inside his bag. Spinach, mushroom, and grilled cheese. I like the way you think. Yeah, it's nothing fancy, but I hope you find it tasty. There's no doubt in my mind that I will. And I'm right. A few bites later, the sandwich is long gone. God, mushrooms and cheese would go well with many things. It's almost criminal. What are you thinking about? 
That full tummy really makes for a happy heart. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Trying new recipes and exploring new flavors is something I enjoy as well. Maybe it could also take inspiration from a nearby restaurant. I could- Whoa! What's wrong? I completely forgot about my car! Hmm. Yeah, the one that broke down. Well, kinda. It mostly just got a flat tire. I should really look for it to make sure it didn't get destroyed in the snowstorm. Cars are freaking expensive after all. I set up a pat my butt a few times to get rid of any remaining dirt. Yeah, I'll be right back. Crow grabs my arm. No. We should start heading back. It won't be much longer until it gets dark. I just want to check real quick. Look, I remember this path. A car should be that far ahead. Are you sure about that? Huh? How do you know you're not making a mistake? You don't know the area like I do. That's to mention, with the blizzard, your car must be covered in snow anyway, so it'll be even harder to spot. Is that really the case? It'll get dark soon. We shouldn't be here when that happens. It's not safe. Yeah, I guess it's true that I don't know this area very well, but... Please, Aspen. Okay. Thank you. For understanding. With a hurried pace, Crow puts back all the containers inside his drawstring bag. Let's get going, shall we? Yeah. Man, this is an awkward walk back. You're really not gonna say anything, Crow? Crow? <sighs> Almost home. Why does he sound so relieved? Let me grab my keys. Sure. What was that sound? <sighs> Damn it. Should've put him inside my coat. While Crow is busy searching for the keys, I try to pinpoint the location of the sound. Where is it? That's... I raised my head and discovered the culprit on the flapping noise. Upon the cabin's roof. Feet perched on the chimney. Disturbing and piercing stare. That's a single crow. A crow with red eyes. And? I mean, heck, like, that wouldn't be the only crow you'll see out here. Honestly saying. Day four. What? Where? What is this place? It's almost like... Hold on a second. Am I dreaming? What's with all the fog? There's no floor. I can walk just fine for some reason. Yes, I'll keep walking. Hello? Okay, this is getting ridiculous. Are you gonna keep me walking in this smoggy maze until I'm 84? I look like a freaking idiot. If I'm supposed to learn a deep dark secret or whatever, at least give me a sign. A different kind of sign! Fog is kind of overrated. You're... Why are you still here? Excuse me? Why are you still here? What? What do you mean? Why? Uh... Why? 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 <laughs> Stop! Uh, I can't take it seriously! I can't. I can't leave. I mean, it's very nice here and I like Crow. Scratch that. I really like Crow. Don't get me wrong, of course. I miss my home and want to get back eventually, but... Well... The bus won't even come until all the snow is removed anyway. So I don't really have a choice. Yeah. <sighs> why am I talking to a crow? Not sure why I expected. Cannot be trusted. Come again? He cannot be trusted. He cannot be trusted. He cannot be trusted. He cannot be trusted. You were cleared out the first lies. time! All, all lies. Funny pictures. Wardrobe. Cozy bed. The wooden texture of the walls. I'm awake. I'm finally awake. God! I cover my face in my hands. What the hell was that dream? Did that really happen? Like, actually? Oh, darn. I wipe my forehead with the back of my hand. Ugh. 
I'm all sweaty. Uh, better take a shower. And I really ain't saying anything about this, huh? Uh, it's quite a long shower. Oh, that was pretty short. Yeah, I really needed that. Can't believe I actually managed to sleep through breakfast. Again. Even after seeing that weird bird and all. It looked just like the one from yesterday. The crows always have red eyes. Aspen! Yeah? Oh, thank God. Went to wake you up, but you weren't in your room. So I thought maybe I would find you here. Yeah, sorry. Wanted to take a shower. Did you need to take the bath? Did you need to use the bathroom? I'm almost done changing. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I just want to let you know that lunch is almost ready. Awesome! Not gonna lie, I'm actually looking forward to it. I really love your cooking. Crow? Uh... S sorry, you, you just caught me off guard. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so glad to hear that. I... I wouldn't mind cooking for you for the rest of my life. What? Nothing, just talking to myself. Yeah, I'll wait for you in the living room. Crow's footsteps get further away until the sounds fade into the distance. Well, thankfully, it's not awkward between us anymore. Yeah, I think. Whatever. Yeah, after getting dressed and drying my hair with a towel, I make my way to the living room. Less than five minutes later, Crow arrives at the usual food tray and places it on the table. All done. Help yourself, Snowflake. The comforting smell of stew makes it sway up to my nose. It's filled with veggies, meat, rosemary, and a mouth-watering broth. Time to dig in. Oh my gosh, what is this? It's so chewy and rich. I've never had this kind of meat before. It's venison. Venison? Holy! Okay, gotta be honest here. Never thought venison meat was something I'd try. Ever. And yet here we are. <laughs> And yet, here we are indeed. Do you like it? Oh, hell yeah. Excellent. I chew and savor every mouthful of the stew until only a few drops are left. But we don't waste food in Aspen Land, so I dip a piece of bread and clean the rest of the bowl with it. You really don't miss, huh? Everything was great, as always. <laughs> it's, it's my pleasure. Besides, you always look so happy when you eat my food. It makes it all worth it. Oh, God, seriously? That's a bit embarrassing. But I guess it's no wonder. Good food does make me smile. Indeed. Huh? What is it? Ah, don't tell me I've got food on my face. Don't I? Huh? No, it's... I grab a napkin from a food tray and vigorously wipe my mouth. Did I get it? Crow doesn't answer. He brings a hand to my cheek instead. Uh, slap his head away, hold his hand when it reaches your cheek. Stay still, close your eyes. I'll hold his hand! And tell you to buy me dinner first, but you've already cooked for me several times. Ah! No, no, that wasn't! He quickly removes his hand. Uh, you just had an eyelash under your eye. Right. It's true, see? Crow shows me his thumb in a panic. Ha! Relax, dude, I was just kidding. Or was I? You're not the only one who can tease, you know. Uh, of course! <laughs> Cutie. Anyway, I actually wanted to ask you something, Crow. You think we should go outside again today? I know it's not that early anymore, but I have to make sure I properly store everything we harvested yesterday. It's important that it's well preserved so it lasts longer. Oh! You mean a chaga and pine needles? Precisely. Though it's a shame we couldn't find any wintergreen berries after all. In any case, why don't you help me? I'll teach you how to make chaga powder. And if you want, yeah, I can show you how to make some of my herbal medicine, too. What do you say? Why is he avoiding the question? He could have just said it'll get dark soon and we can't go outside tomorrow. But he suddenly changed the subject. Aspen? Fine. I'll concede. For now. But you bet your butt I'll ask again, crow boy. Yeah, I can be very persistent when I want to. Sorry, I got distracted for a second. Sure, let's do it. Sounds like fun. Alrighty. Let's get the chaga from the kitchen, shall we? Hmm. Crow 
opens one of the upper cabinets, takes out a coffee grinder, and puts it on the counter. Wait, we're not going to use a mortar and pestle? That's not a bad guess, actually. We're definitely going to be using them to make some herbal medicine later. For the powder, though, chocolate mushroom is a bit lumpy and much too big for a mortar, so we'll use the grinder instead. Ah, that makes sense. Once we both wash up, we use both our hands to break the chaga into small pieces so that they fit better inside the grinder. And thus the powder is born. This is so cool! <laughs> I'm glad you're having fun. What should we do with the pine needles? Don't worry about it. I made sure to put a couple of bags in the freezer yesterday. The rest are being dried on a piece of cloth, but it'll take a few days, so... And why do you say he needed to store the pine needles if he had already... You know what? Forget it. Let's see where this goes. We can make the medicine, right? Indeed. What are we making? Hmm. I think a poultice will be good. It's pretty easy to make and only needs a few ingredients. Ah, it's like a skin remedy, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. The kitchen counter is a bit small for us both, though. We should take everything to the living room. Sure thing. Crow grabs a handful of herbs, a roundish container with clay powder, and a knife, while I take the mortar and pestle, a cup of boiling water, and a small bottle of lavender oil. Alrighty. Let's start with the herbs. With incredible precision, Crow wastes no time in cutting all the leaves. It reminds me of whenever he cuts veggies for the meals he prepares. When he's done, he puts them inside the mortar. Okay, put some water on top of the herbs. How's this? Excellent. Crow's hands make semicircular motions as he keeps grinding the wet leaves for several minutes. At some point, he asks me to add a few drops of lavender oil and a teaspoon of clay powder to the mixture. The final result is a green and creamy paste similar to pesto sauce. We spend a couple of hours making a number of poultices, creams, and ointments so that there's a hefty reserve in case of emergencies. I give Crow the last of the empty containers, and he pours the herbal ointment inside of it with the help of the pestle. All done. Yep. All done. Thanks for lending a hand. No worries. It was an interesting learning experience. Wonderful. Like a kitten who just woke up from a long nap, Crow stretches his limbs for a few seconds, then starts putting all the dirty dishes away, including those from today's lunch. No, oh, I can! I interrupt myself when I notice the window. It's already dark. Sorry, did you say something? Yeah, I was a bit distracted putting everything on the tray. <laughs> Crow, do you think we can go outside tomorrow? And please don't avoid my question like you did this afternoon. Why? Huh? We just went yesterday, didn't we? And harvested plenty of things at that. I don't see why we should do it again if we don't need to. I mean, it did take a while to find the chocolate mushroom, and walking towards the side of the forest that had non-poisonous pine needle trees. I don't think we really harvested that much. Still, he's probably going to make another excuse if I point this out. I need a different approach. <sighs> Look, if this is about your car, it's not. Well, it's not only about my car. Apart from the plants, you also study animals, don't you? Yeah? I want to do that too. You see, I happened to see a crow yesterday. For a moment, I swear I see his right eye twitch. It's so quick and imperceptible that it's as if it didn't happen. Okay, and what about it? God, he's really not budging, is he? I can't help but feel that crow is important. Let's not mention it had red eyes, just in case. Reminded me that you're researching their habits and stuff. Can't we go out in the morning to see if we can find any crows staying inside all the time and start to feel suffocating? Plus, it was you who said there are things out there we have to see for ourselves, right? Ah. <sighs> Look, Aspen. I know that's what I said a few days ago, but it's not that simple. The weather here is really unpredictable this time of the year. In fact, it's extremely likely there'll be another blizzard soon. What? In the meantime, I can give you a book on crows if you want to learn more about them. And if you're feeling suffocated, I can always open one of the windows, but we really shouldn't be going outside. It's not safe. He cannot be trusted. Yeah, I'll still have to go back home eventually. The moment those words came out of my mouth, his expression pulls a 180. Why are you so persistent? 
Do you really want to freeze to death? Is that it? Are you that stupid? Where did the Doom music come from? Oh, no. Oh, no, you didn't. Now, wait a goddamn minute here, you freaking lettuce. Who the hell do you think you are? I'm someone who knows the dangers and implications of what you want to do. I'm someone with fucking common sense. Something that you clearly don't have. What? Screw this. Screw you. I'm not going to sit around here talking to a pig and an imbecile who thinks he knows what's best for me better than myself. Maybe you should leave tomorrow morning. Maybe I will. Fine. Fine. With the conversation clearly over, I storm off all the way to my room. Ugh, it makes me so angry. I scream into the bed pillow and kick my legs on the mattress. What the hell is this problem? He can't tell me what to do. I'm a freaking adult. He doesn't own me. I do have common sense. Probably. Ugh. I can't deny that he did seem worried, but why won't he tell me anything? Crow, what are you hiding? Well, I guess we're going to find out soon enough. Day five. Morning, Murdy, huh? Yeah, I yawn and stretch out my limbs. Yeah, I didn't even change my clothes to go to sleep yesterday. The fire must have exhausted me. Yeah, I still don't think the crux of what I was saying was wrong. And if Crow reacted like that, then he really is hiding something. But he's been so kind to me. I shouldn't have lashed out like that. I mean, yeah, he lashed out first yesterday. Not to mention he's being really secretive. So I lost my temper. But in comparison to everything he's done for me, yeah, I don't think I could hate him even if he ends up being a criminal. I can't believe that went through my mind just now. Maybe I'm crazier than I thought. Still, the fact that Crow's not telling me everything, no matter how good he feels about me, means he doesn't trust me completely. I have to do something to change that. And for that, I need more information. Once I change my clothes, I go wash up in the bathroom. And I make sure to splash my face with a good amount of water. I need to be fully awake for once. Ironically, though, this morning's the earliest I've been awake since forever. Crow should still be asleep. Should I make breakfast for once? I think he'd like that. Crow's not here. Okay, he's definitely sleeping then. Well, I guess it's cooking time. All right, it's done. Mission complete. Once I've finished cleaning everything up, I look at my creation placed upon a couple of ceramic plates. I don't think I'm a bad cook. Well, maybe decent is more accurate, but... It's been a while since I made these. I hope they're edible, at least. To be honest, I'd like to investigate the cabin a bit more, but I shouldn't take any unnecessary risks right now. Crow could wake up at any moment. And no matter how hospitable he is, there's a difference between making yourself at home and snooping around for clues. He's not an idiot, and perceptive to boot. I shake my head and look in the direction of the kitchen door. Time to go look for him. Okay, since he didn't come to the kitchen yet, he must be washing up. They, they saw you! Crow? It came from the living room, didn't it? Who is he talking to? As quietly as possible, I tiptoe across the hallway until I'm right next to the living room's entrance. The voices are definitely coming from the other side. I gulp. My hand touches the handles and ever so slightly begins to open the door. The window's open. That's unusual. Wait, what the? Is that? Is that a crow? What the? Wait, what? It's why I keep telling you to leave it all to me. What's the point if you show yourself? It makes everything more complicated. Aspen isn't stupid. They already suspect something strange is going on. I would not have made an appearance if you weren't taking so long. This is the first time this has happened. At this rate, I'm going to have to visit their dreams again. What the hell did you just say? His face twisted to a deep glare. One I've never seen before. Again? Are you fucking kidding me right now? Did I stutter? 
I love the crow. Can I please date the crow? Tell me one reason why I shouldn't kill you. Because of the blood pact. Blood pact? You're lucky you look like that. What was that? Oh no. It's the boy Foster that a freaky blue hedgehog. These damn creaky wooden doors! No think. Oh only run! Frick, frick, frick! Please tell me I didn't completely scrub just now. Uh Aspen? Okay, you've got this. Act natural. Crow enters the kitchen and approaches me. Crow, buddy, old pal! Fancy seeing you here in your own kitchen! Ah -ha, how's it going? Fancy seeing you here? What am I talking about? This is his home. Of course he would be here. I mean, good morning. Good morning. Kill me now. This is the complete opposite of acting natural. Quick, find somebody to get me out of this awkward conversation. I spot my culinary creation not that far away from me. Ah, right. That's why I went to look for him in the first place. Uh, I made breakfast. Huh? What? I grab one of the plates and show it to him. They're not as good as yours, so don't set your expectations too high. Pancakes? Yeah, hopefully they taste okay. It's gonna use honey at first, but I've seen you eat lots of fruits these days, so I thought I'd change it up a little and use cranberry jam instead. I... Did you get up early to make these for me? Something like that. Uh. Can I try them? Go ahead. Crow picks up the fork and cuts a little piece. Oh, they're good. Really? Yeah. You're just saying that. I'm not. Did you try them? Not yet. Crow cuts another piece and puts the fork in my mouth. I didn't expect him to feed me himself. Wait, why am I getting embarrassed by this? I'm not a high school anime girl. Hmm? Well, it's, uh, it's good. <laughs> Isn't it? Not as good as this pancakes, though. Yeah, I'll make some mint tea to go with these. Why don't you wait for me in the living room? I guess the crow he was talking to already left. Sure. About to head out when a crow touches my shoulder. Uh... Also, I'd like to talk about what happened yesterday. With that, you okay with you? Yeah, I want to talk to you too. Thank you. See you in a bit. I nod and turn around. The window's closed again. I move towards it and try to open it. It won't budge. Either this is locked or my arms are too damn weak. It's one thing to dream about a bird speaking to you. It's another thing entirely to have the same bird confirm they appeared in your dream. I'm not delusional. Something supernatural is clearly going on here. What exactly? Ghosts? Demons? Something else entirely? <sighs> As I've done a few times already the past few days, I take a look at Crow's collection of books. I don't see the red one I took a glance at the other day. Crow must have moved it to his room to keep work at it. Maybe to hide it from me as well. Who knows at this point? Sorry to keep you waiting. Yeah, no, it's alright. Crow places the usual tray on the wooden table. Soon enough, we both sit down in our respective seats and start eating. Even though we're sitting in the same places as before, Crow always chooses the one-seat sofa. It feels like we're further apart than ever. The pancakes might have helped a little, but I guess things are still pretty awkward. Well, it's no wonder with our fight yesterday. And as I even counted that what I witnessed just a few minutes ago. Did you really not notice I was eavesdropping? I'm scared to look up. What if he decides to kick me out after all? I'm sorry. I went too far yesterday. It wasn't right. He even went as far as to make breakfast for us and all. To be honest, I'm feeling really ashamed right now. I just... I panicked, and before I could stop myself, I ended up seeing some pretty hurtful things. I hope you can forgive me, Aspen. It's fine, at least you apologize. We both said too much. I'm sorry too. I'm sorry too. For the record, your lattice hair is red as hell. Yeah, sure, why not? Thank you for apologizing, Crow. I could say I wasn't mad, but I didn't fare much better, honestly. I'm sorry too. Also, for the record, I think your lattice hair is red as hell. Lettuce hair? Huh? Aspen! Yeah, you should see your face! I mean it, though. Thank you. If only you trusted me enough to tell me what's bothering you, too. Either way, 
I thought about what you said last night. You think you could wait a little longer? I promise, we'll go outside again, to forage, to study animals, whatever you wish, truly. The fact that you want to know more about nature, uh, that you're interested in my research, it fills me with joy, more than I thought it would. But, but the weather really is unpredictable this time of year. I thought it let up sooner. However, there's a high probability that another blizzard will strike between today and tomorrow. Oh, and that's not even taking into account the scant few hours of light we got. Winter days are really short, but in this area, they're even shorter. I just want to make sure you're safe. There it is again, being safe. Safe from what? Because it sure doesn't feel like he's talking about the blizzard. Then, the bus won't be available at the day after tomorrow? <sighs> I'm sorry. It doesn't say anything else. Yeah, I'm not sure what to say either. What is there to say? I can't even contact anyone because there's no reception, let alone internet. Is there really nothing I can do? Nah, there is something. Crow, you think you could lend me that book you told me about yesterday? Yesterday? Oh, you mean the book on crows? Yeah, that's the one. Of course, but... Are you okay? Can't say I am. No. I'm honestly pretty shocked right now. Uh, <sighs> what am I saying? Of course you're not fine. That was a stupid question. Still, moping we'll about it won't help me. So I'd like to use this time to learn something instead. You're seriously amazing. What? Uh, Nothing! Let me get you that book. Crow walks towards the bookshelf and takes out a grayish hardcover without hesitation. He wasn't kidding when he said he could tell him apart. Here you go, Snowflake! If you find it interesting. Yeah, don't worry. I will. Thank you. I hugged the book to my chest. I make a slight face and bend over, bringing a hand to my stomach. What? Aspen? Oh god, you're right. You feel sick. Yeah, <laughs> guess I'm not feeling too hot. Sorry. I think I'll rest in my room for today. Yeah, of course. Do you need any medicine? Ah, no, nah, I'm okay. Just so you take it easy. All right. Please, tell me if you need anything, okay? I will. Thank you, Crow. Whew. Okay, I think that went well. I hope. As soon as I take off my shoes to climb on the bed and make myself comfortable, I put the book on my lap and turn to the first page. Study on crows. Intelligent, adaptable, and self-aware. Time to learn about crows. Corvus. An especially well-known genus, composed of medium to large-sized birds, which make up a third species in the Corvidae family. The most commonly known include ravens, rooks, and crows. All 133 species of Corvidae have been discovered to this day. Only around 49 are included inside the Corvus taxonomy. Going even further than that, there are approximately 36 of these species which belong to the crow family alone. Holy! 36! Oh... I didn't think there were this many variants. Crows are passerine songbirds, which are generally black in color, although exceptions have been with us when it comes to different species. This also applies to their sizes, as well as the color of their eyes. Huh. Interesting. The next several pages contain a detailed classification of the 30-something species of crows up to date. These include their scientific names and a group of several drawings, most probably drawn by Crow himself, portraying their appearance. Black eyes, white eyes. Come on, it's gotta be one with... Here! White neck crows. Overall appearance is black with a few white feathers on the base of their neck. So rarely visible. Their eyes are distinctively crimson red. No, this isn't it. This isn't it at all. It's completely different from the one I saw that day and the one in my dreams. If anything, the most similar of them at all has to be the carrion crow, but those have black eyes. Is it a new species, then? Or... Is it not even a crow? There's no other way. To get the answers I want. To get the answers I need. I have to go outside. I have to go outside and find that red-eyed crow. Day 6. Huh. It's 6.30 a.m. I put my phone back in my jacket's pocket. Last one's over. Backpack? Check. Water bottle and snacks? Check. Knife? Check. Gloves? I slip one of my thumbs out of a warm cover, enveloping my hands and caress the wool fabric. Check. Okay. I have everything. 
Thank God I asked Crow yesterday to open this window a little bit so that I could get some fresh air during dinner. Now I know how this damn thing works. Can't leave through the front door. After all, he probably has a key in this room and I'm not risking waking him up. Honestly, I wish he could have left from my room's window, but that freaking thing is sturdier than a rock. Mistakes were made. Alright, let's do this. Better be quick. Nailed it! No time to dawdle, though. I've only got a few hours until it gets dark again. First things first, I need to find my car. It's so... quiet. Too quiet. I can't help but feel some kind of... unsettling presence in the air. Am I just being too paranoid? Yeah, probably. Probably. I'm just gonna say I'm paranoid. Ugh. Much longer until I find something. This feels too much like the first day I got here. There really isn't anything up here but snow and big trees. The road! Hell yeah. That's... The moment I arrived near the road, I spot a white metallic sheen. It's all too familiar for me to mistake it. My car! Ah! Ah! What the... What was that? What? I try approaching my car a second time for good measure. But the moment my foot gets near the wheels, I'm sent flying to the ground once again. What the hell is going on? Okay. Careful now. I like the first two attempts. I only tried to put a hand near whatever the hell is preventing me from reaching my wheeled companion. I don't fall this time. But there definitely is something there. Something like a force field of some sort. Well, if anything, this proves that there are paranormal things that play even more. Yeah. I crouched out to hug my knees and bury my head between them. What do I do now? What can I do? How the hell do you defeat a supernatural? Yeah, I should look for that crow. Even though my eyes are still close, I shut them even tighter to squeeze my arms in my hands. Like a silly ritual to brace myself. Huh? Once I'm back to my feet, I spot an old, an odd line in the snow between my feet and the car. A line I hadn't noticed before. What the? Is this a line of the force field? I glance both to my left and right. The trail in the snow keeps going further and further. Guess there's no way around it. Step by step. I follow the line until, not far from where I'm walking, a reddish stain brings me to a dead stop. Is that dirt? No, it's too red to be dirt. I move faster, and I see it. This wasn't here before. A strange symbol is carved into the snow. Perhaps a snowflake, perhaps a star being pierced by arrows. It's disturbing all the same. The center looks like an open eye. The hue that's ingrained in this line Makes them look like veins. It's unmistakable. It's unsettling. And it chills me to my core. Blood. Ah! The mysterious crow flaps its wings and lands around in front of me, putting himself between me and the symbol. He stares. He stares so deeply into my eyes that I feel a shiver coming. You can't leave. Ah, uh, really? Yeah! I kind of already figured. Is that what I'd like to say? Uh, this isn't the time to be sarcastic. Why? The crow glances at the symbol, then back at me. He won't let you. Yeah, I need to ask him who he's talking about. Still, this bird is no saint either. If he even is a bird at all. Crows seem to be... Crows seem to imply that he looked like one. I also haven't forgotten what he told Crow yesterday. He's a liar. Why? He pauses, considers my question for a moment. Then he plucks the feathers on his back, or pretends to do so. The crow's eyes aren't a symbol yet again. There is something he hopes to achieve. I see. The crow looks puzzled when I open my backpack. Don't know if this will work, but it's the best I've got. I hope there's at least some bird instinct left inside of him. If you tell me what he's hiding, I'll give you a whole granola bar. Are you mocking me, Shuri? <laughs> 
human, eh? You think I would fall for such a stupid bribe? Yes. A bribe? Ha. Perish the thought. Yes, this is a freaking bribe, and you better fall for it, you cryptic crooked beak. I can see the granola bars reflected in his eyes. He's tempted. Very tempted. But I'm entirely convinced. Oh, come on. Don't get your feathers in a twist. I'm just sharing a snack with a very smart bird who warned me about imminent danger is all. One is not enough. Just freaking. Okay, okay. I'll give you both granola bars. Happy now? Without answering, the crow pulls out the bars from my hand with such vigor that he tears my glove. Ah! The sting of my palm makes me bring my hand closer to my face. Figures. Stupid bird tore my skin. God, it's like you've never eaten before. I look back at him. He's already licking the crumbs from his beak. And not just the crumbs. A small drop of my blood seems to have made it to his mouth as well. Still not enough. What did you just say? He turns his snack in my direction. I gulp and step back. Behind the cabin. Huh? Go further beyond the cabin. Then head straight. You will find your answers there. Wait. Ah! Jeez, you... Huh? Symbol's gone. Why does that make me uneasy? Can't say I fully trust the bird either, but I don't have any other leads. There it is again. What is this feeling? It's as if someone or something was watching me. Damn it. It's getting darker. There's a bunch of clouds, too. I should hurry up. Crouching down as much as possible in order to avoid the windows. Better be safe than sorry. I move forward in slow but steady steps until the cabin's far enough for me to walk at a quicker pace. What? What is this? A huge mass of decayed wood surrounds the area. Everything is gloomy, hushed, disturbing. Small decrepit houses that look like they haven't been inhabited in decades. Traces of what was once a wide-ranging crop farm. Eerie, soulless, obscure. Abandoned. The light is gone. A ghost town. The thing behind Crow's log cabin is a literal ghost town. It's pretty much impossible to let go of the shock and utter disbelief I'm feeling right now. But my eyes start adjusting to the scene nonetheless. Wait. Is that... What I initially thought was a piece of broken wood for one of vacant houses now starts to look more and more like a crooked sign. So the words are somewhat faded. No wonder. The sign is pretty much ancient. They are still distinguishable. Let's see what it says. Important notice. Danger zone. Do not enter. Due to a long bout of unprecedented winter weather, this area has been closed off to the public. By a unanimous decision of the Sudarian government, an agricultural and urban expansion has been approved in order to migrate the farmsteads from the village formerly known as Leyden Springs, now Winter Hollow, to the town of Veritas Falls. We apologize for the inconvenience. Thank you for understanding. Oh my god. Oh my god. How did I end up in a place like this? Also, like... I don't understand the implications of this. Is this a demon zone? A demon zone? Hell? Is Crow even human? Did I piss someone off in the past life or something? You've got to be kidding me. If I speak too soon, one more time, I swear I'm going to punch myself. Repeatedly. Thank heavens that's so close by. Demon, vampire, alien, whatever the hell. I'll die frozen now if I don't get into ca cabin ASAP. Taking the tea on plan B can wait. I run as hard as I can and head to the inside of the living room window. I'm prepared this time. I'm not going to pass out in a snowstorm. Ah! The current of air is so strong I almost fall face first into the room. I go inside. I wasn't managed to make the window panes meet. I lean my whole weight into the glass. Just a little more. Am I already dead? Is it that twist again? Am I already dead? Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Finally. Damn you, strong winds! Where's Crow? 
I told you a blizzard was coming. I told you again and again. I told you, and you didn't listen. Ah! Crow grabs my wrist and pins me against the wall. Why? Ah! Why don't you ever listen to me? Why are you so desperate to go outside? Have I not been kind to you? Fed you? Given you a place to stay? Why? Why do you want to leave me so bad? He grasped me even tighter. You're hurting me. Oh, uh, I'm hurting you? <laughs> That's rich. Fantastic. Just great. What about when you left without saying anything? What about when you fucking lied to my face, thinking I wouldn't notice? How do you think that made me feel? I don't know, pretty freaking goofy considering the look on your face right now. I'm hurting you? What about what you've done to me? What about what I feel? Am I really not enough? Do you hate me that much? Answer me! What do I have to do for you to stay? I can feel his hands trembling on my wrist. I release one of my hands from his grasp and caress his cheek. But he pulls back. Crow. Relationships shouldn't be built on lies. Stop trying to manipulate me. I want you to trust me. But I wish... No. What I want is for you to trust me. Just before you said I'm a liar, right? You said I was lying, but you haven't been honest yourself. You didn't tell me that Winter Hollow is an abandoned village. You didn't tell me that no bus is ever coming by. You didn't tell me about the talking crow. Trust is a two-way street. I... If you want someone to trust you, you have to trust them too. Crow, there can't be love without trust. How can I believe you care about me when you won't even tell me what's going on? I need to think. Honestly, so do I. I take off my jacket and carry it on my arm. We should be able to talk better after we both get some sleep. I'm not going anywhere. I need answers. And once I get them, I'll... I actually need to go back home. Uh, I better head to my room. Earlier, when I mentioned the talking bird, he reacted. He looked anxious, scared even. Maybe he's worried about how I'm going to react. And where does the blood pack fall in all of this? What does it mean? Uh, there has to be something I can do. What if that stupid bird is threatening him to do stuff against his will? I have to make sure Crow trusts me. Whatever happens, I'll make sure he trusts me. Day 7 Figures. I couldn't sleep. Well, who can blame me if how action packed yesterday was? Scratch that. If how action packed this whole week has been. A lot has happened in a very short time. But what surprises me the most is myself. I mean, normally people would be scared and put up by Crow in this whole situation, right? Especially given how much he's lied. He's even pushed me against the wall yesterday. Who's to say he won't go even further? And yet, I didn't mind. I didn't mind it one bit. It was showing me his true self, or well, part of himself that he didn't want to show, rather. Because I wouldn't say he's never been genuine. I was more worried about him kicking me out if I discover all of his secrets and his relationship with the red-eyed Crow. I was more hurt by the fact that he didn't trust me, lied to me even. That was the subject of the lie itself. What is this? Why do I have such strong feelings for him when it's only been a week since I met him? I've known other people for far, far longer. I've never felt this kind of connection with anyone else. Yeah, <sighs> must be crazy. Aspen, you awake? I am. God, so glad you answered. Yeah. Indeedy. No, m not much point of pretending I'm not here, right? Yeah. Could you be any more awkward, Aspen? You need lessons on socializing skills. Pronto. Still, he hasn't left, so I'm probably overthinking. Did you want to ask me anything? Look, there's something really important I have to tell you. Yeah, I'll bet. It's about yesterday. In a way. Will you let me ask questions too? Yeah, of course. He sounds anxious. Yeah, I wish I could hug him right now. Can you come to my room? We'll talk there. Sure thing. Let me get changed and I'll knock on your door once I'm ready. Thank you. Snowflake. All right. Let's do this. <laughs> 
Once I take the clothes I'm going to wear from the wardrobe, I head to the bathroom for a quick shower. Okay, hopefully I didn't take too long. Didn't even wash my hair so I could be faster. After a couple of minutes of mulling over silly stuff, I knock on the door. Crow? Come in! Whoa! Although the room is unfamiliar, I find myself comforted by the coziness of the same ca cabin walls I've already become so familiar with. As expected, Crow's space is full of books and research papers scattered throughout his work desk, shelves, and even the floor. The desk also has a cupboard on top filled to the brim with bottles of plants, medicine, creams, and other indistinguishable vessels. Well, what takes me more by surprise, though, are the paintings covering part of the wall and easel lying against the window. Oh, these look amazing! I must thought these were pictures with all the detail. Thank you! Painting is a hobby of mine. It helps me clear my head, and especially when I'm not feeling well. I guess you could call it a kind of meditation. Yeah. <laughs> suits you. You like drawing too. Very much so. Though I sometimes draw for research purposes too. Makes sense. Your drawings in the crow book were really good. And the crow painting. I take a few steps to give it a closer look. No red eyes. Instead, they're more of a bluish black. Deep and mystic. I love it too. Amazing artist, crow. Thank you. I'll make you one sometime. Yeah, I'd like that. We stay silent for a few moments, not sure how to continue the conversation. Small talk only gets you so far, after all. We need to address the elephant in the room. Attention proves to be too much, even for me, so I try to break the silence. Crow, sorry, uh, do you mind if we get to the topic at hand? We really need to talk. Y yeah, for sure. I was just about to say the same thing, actually. Ready when you are. I'm all ears. Crow nods and signals me towards the bed while, we while he sits on the desk chair. Once he makes sure I'm comfortable, he takes a deep breath and looks me right in the eye. First things first, is there anything you want to ask? Wait, let me rephrase that. Is there anything you need to ask, no matter what? Well, to be honest, there's one thing in particular that I can't get out of my mind. Go ahead. Are you human? Crow audibly gasps, as if that wasn't a question he was expecting. Soon enough, however, the surprise is replaced with a sad smile. Yeah, and no. That was my turn to gasp. Wait, what? How does that work? My body's pretty much the same as any other human beings, with some exceptions. What are those? One of them you can probably already guess. Crow's eyes are very distinctively red, and dub is due to some kind of rare pigmentation. So lots of people use colored contacts these days, so I didn't think much of them. At first. The more I looked into his eyes, though, the more I noticed a certain glow to them. The glow that made me shiver every time I felt his gaze. You were the one watching me when I went outside to meet the red-eyed crow, weren't you? That's right. Well, more, or more accurately, the bird's eyes were watching you. I can see through the eyes of crows in Winter Hollow. Is that why your eyes are red? Yeah. Okay, that's kind of rad, not gonna lie. <laughs> why does your answer not surprise me? What about the other thing? Knowledge. Knowledge about nature. As much as I can learn stuff from books, it will never compare to the knowledge I can receive firsthand from the environment itself. Even if there's a deep darkness within it. Even if I can't leave the area anymore. Even if I have to enter the darkness myself. I'm willing to make that sacrifice. Why do I feel like there's still something he's not telling me? You heard what I was talking about with that crow the other day, didn't you? I nod. Do you remember what he said? Who could forget something like that? He said you had a blood pact. Exactly. What is that bird anyway? Some kind of demon? There were others like him too. They're red scavengers. Demonic animals who feed on human blood and meat. The hairs on the back of my neck stand up. They're not feeding on you, are they? It's me you're worrying about? No, Snowflake. They're feeding on other humans. Humans that I've been getting for them whenever they died in snowstorms. Wait, but that doesn't make sense. You have so much food. Can't they feed on that? Yeah, I'm afraid my re my reserves are limited, Aspen. I did get a huge supply when I moved here, so I tried to preserve as much as I could in my pantry. I wasn't born in a hunter-gatherer village for nothing. You have a pantry? Wait, no, we can talk about that later. Even so, if you have that many reserves, they could eat. It's not that simple, Snowflake. They need humans to survive. And as I mentioned before, 
I can't leave the area. It's part of the blood pact. Are these scavengers some kind of weird vampire ghoul birds? Yeah. Holy. Okay, now everything starts to make sense. A bird. A freaky bird tried to set me up. He tried to make me despise Crow so that he could get his gourmet human dinner. Yet for some reason, Crow was taking too long. He said one of the things they gave you was knowledge of nature. Have you learned anything else apart from what they taught you? So no matter how almighty they might seem with their demon powers or whatever, I can't imagine this deal being good in the long run. There's only so much nature in Winter Hollow, you know. If you can't even call it nature nowadays. Uh, internal winter isn't very typical, and I imagine even the demon crows are becoming antsy with so few humans passing by. Crow clenches his fist. He doesn't elaborate, but he doesn't deny anything either. Why aren't you blaming me? Huh? What do you mean? Please tell me you're joking. I seriously don't know what you're talking about. I fed humans to demon birds. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, did you not realize how goofy that sounds? It's like, I fed humans to demon birds. Oh. <laughs> Oh, come on, Crow. Just chillax. I was going to do the same with you. <laughs> oh, my. Do you think it's the first time I've been eaten, Crow? It's not, I swear. But you didn't. No. Why? Crow bites his lips so hard, I can almost taste the iron myself. Why? I'm sure you're already tired of hearing me say this all the time, but the weather in Winter Hollow is very unpredictable. It wasn't always like this. Farmers actually lived here before. What? For real? Every year, they would stay for three whole seasons, at least before winter even began. Also, their cattle didn't have to withstand the cold. Of course, this was when the weather was actually normal, but the village was still called Laden Spring. Laden Spring? I see. So the sign I saw yesterday was a real deal that- Is this- Is this visual novel, like, kinda trying to make a statement on, like, global warming? Kinda neat! What happened? No one knows. What? What's a demon but Believe me, I'm not fond of them either, but they're not to blame for the never-ending winter. They're just the reason why I made the pack in the first place. So are you telling me that capitalism is the, <laughs> is the culprit the whole time? I just couldn't bring myself to leave late in spring. I had to know what was causing this strange weather. How it affected nature. How it possessed other animals to survive under such harsh conditions. Of course, I'm only human. I couldn't possibly risk it to the point where my body would break. I needed something more powerful. That's when I met the Red Scavengers. He never appeared before that? No, that's what's so strange. I knew late in spring, top to bottom, yet I'd never seen creatures like them. They're strong. Strong enough to withstand blizzards. They just don't have the energy to kill humans or move them around. So that's why you made the pact. Yeah. I never really killed any humans myself, though. The snowstorm still all the work for me. Well, not all the work. There are times when the snow covers the corpses so much I have to get a shovel. It's been harder to spot them too lately. I don't know how long these demons can take without eating humans to survive. But if it's been as long as Crow's implying, they must have been desperate. And me conveniently passing by was the chance they needed. If that's the case, why am I different then? From what I'm getting, it seems you've been struggling with getting any humans in the area. Why leave me be? I was surprised myself. Huh? You were the only one who asked for help. I... You can't be serious! Unbelievable, right? Out of all the people who got stuck here, you were the only one who desperately tried to survive. That made me curious about you. It made me respect you. Even though you arrived so incredibly unprepared, you still made everything you could with whatever you had at your disposal. I... I just got here, fam! I I didn't really do anything. Like, I, my car broke down, and so I, I was just trying to find a way out. I, I, I just came here for a vacation. What do you mean? I think he may be giving me too much credit here, but I want to keep listening to him. You were so amazing. I just had to get to know you. And you ended up being so much more than I could have possibly expected. You wanna know why I didn't feed you to the Red Scavengers? You wanna know why I didn't care about them anymore? Because I love you. But I'll understand if you don't feel the same, of course. Even taking into account my excuses, 
Well, you met about a week ago, all things considered. Yeah, don't let him finish that sentence. <clears throat> it's a very quick kiss, but it should have conveyed my feelings well enough. Crow doesn't say anything. He just stands there in shock. Red as a cranberry. Yeah, I don't feel like teasing him right now, so I'm nervous myself. Well, say something. Am I such a bad kisser? No. No. It's just... Is this really okay with you? Why wouldn't it be? I... Did you not hear what I said before? What the fact I feed people to demon birds? You said you love me. I gave you my answer. Ah. <sighs> You'll be the death of me. I really don't care what you did before, Crow. I don't care what you were going to do with me either. I don't care that we've known each other for very little. I don't care if every single person in the world thinks we're a couple of deranged maniacs. The only thing I care about is you. I care about you. And I want to be with you. Always. Aspen. But no more lying, or I will seriously punch you in the face. I can't stand being left in the dark. <laughs> God, you're so... You really don't mind. I'm such a crazy guy. Joke's on you. I'm into that. <laughs> oh, no. Me and, like, everyone else watching this. Besides... I'm pretty crazy myself. Or I will be, anyway. Huh? What do you mean? Take me to the red-eyed crow. It's time we see eye to eye. What do you mean? Day what? Ah, the air feels so crisp and clean. It does, doesn't it? It's a perfect day for a date in the woods. Crow tightens his grip on my hand, and I squeeze back. <sighs> oh, my eyes! Don't forget we've got an errand to take care of first, okay? And we can enjoy this date as much as we want. Fine. I kiss him on the cheek. Feeling bold, aren't we? He'll get you later for that. Ah, uh, whatever do you mean? Crow shakes his finger at me. Tiss, tiss. You're gonna have to wait until we finish this job, Snowflake. Meanie. <laughs> After walking for a few minutes, we arrive at the road next to the waking woods. Although the snow was, has buried part of their bodies, a couple of humans can still be seen on the ground. <sighs> a little less than last time. You think Rory will be okay with this much? Honestly, he has no right to complain after everything you did for him and his siblings. Yeah. Ah. Don't be mad, Jewel. It's thanks to him that we have internet now. Plus, not gonna lie, I think they actually enjoy sitting on the power lines, don't you think? Animal instincts must be true for demons, too. <sighs> the cables are the only things that make sense to me. I still don't understand how that Waldry, whatchamacallit, works. Wi-Fi, Crow. Whatever. It's all mumbo-jumbo. What's important is that we get... What's important is that it gets the job done. I guess that... YouTube stuff isn't bad either. Ha! Come on, give me a little credit. Making all those advertisements wasn't easy, you know? I promise, I'll teach you all I know about the internet. Don't underestimate a freelance graphic designer. <laughs> yep, I know. He cups my face with his free hand and gives me a smooch. Ha! Okay, how should we deal with the bodies this time? Let's take off the clothes first. What if Rory ruins them again? I mean, you never know. You might have something useful. Ah, uh, you have such a beautiful mind. How can I be so lucky? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Then, what are we waiting for? Crow bows and signals me to go ahead with one of his hands. After you, Snowflake. I... I have no idea how to feel about this ending. <laughs> oh my god. Oh! Oh, that's the end! Frick! Okay, so that was the Twisted ending. There are two more endings to get, which will be like the Sweet ending and the Yandere ending. We're gonna go for the Sweet ending first before we go for Yandere. So first thing we gotta do is tell him that we're okay at the first choice. I'm okay, all things considered. Yeah, I think. <laughs> that's good enough in my books. It was quite a close call, wasn't it? Yeah, <sighs> you can say that again. Thank you for helping me. Of course! By the way, uh, let's skip. We've already seen all this. 
breakfast sounds wonderful. Are you sure you don't mind? I'd rather not eat anything right now. You sure you don't mind? Don't worry about it. I love cooking, so it's no trouble at all. In that case, I'd love to eat something too. Thank you. My pleasure. Oh, that reminds me. Is there anything you can't eat? Yeah, I'm good for anything. Uh, let's skip ahead. Uh, let's see. I should probably ask first before, like, dipping my feet on it. I don't really want to, but I should probably ask first. It's not my house after all. It looks so inviting, though. Hmm. Something on your mind? Yeah! Crow smiles at me while holding a tray of a bunch of stuff. God, how long was I in my head? How long was I in my head in the clouds? I didn't even hear him come in. Sorry. I was just thinking the carpet looked comfortable. I see. Is that so? You're free to rest your feet on it if you want to. Really? Be my guest. Thank you. Oh my god, the sound of feet! It's so soft! <laughs> your face is priceless. I'm happy to see you're more relaxed now. Alright, let's skip ahead. We've already seen all this. Uh, I'm going to blush. Oh, um, thanks. God, I was definitely not expecting that. Hmm? Huh? Is that a blush I see? How cute. Maybe I should call you Snowflake more often. D well, yeah, I don't, uh, mind. I see. Good to know. This is only because I like the pet name! This is only because I like the pet name! I had two teaspoons of sugar and stir and skip ahead. Man, this is long. Um... Uh, I don't want to impose. Are you sure? I don't want to impose. You're not. I wouldn't have offered you to stay otherwise. Then, okay, I'll stay. Alrighty. His enthusiasm is so infectious that I find myself jumping in joy as well. Seems I have a roommate now. Or cabin mate, rather. Thank you, Crow. I mean it. We're going to have so much fun you'll never want to leave. Ha! Stop teasing me, I might just believe you. And a skip. Uh, right. Uh, keep the book right with me. Decide to come clean. Quickly put the book away. Decide to come clean, I think. Um, okay, so basically how the game works is that uh, there's a point system uh, for, like, uh, the eager ending, uh, which was a twisted ending. Uh, there, there are points for, like, sweets. And there's also points for, like, uh, that goes towards, like, how, uh, like, hostile you are towards him so like as long as you have one of them like high enough like it'll lead you down towards that ending so i'm just gonna come clean uh i know he said i should feel at home but for some reason it kind of feels like I invaded his privacy thanks for waiting snowflake i fidget with my hands hmm. what's wrong i'm sorry crow i looked at one of your books without permission don't worry about it feel free to read any books you like most of them are research-oriented, though, so I'm not sure if you'll be interested. Wait. Huh? Uh... Out of curiosity, which one did you pick? Uh, that one. I point to the only red hardcover on the shelves. None of the others were red, so it made me curious. <laughs> <laughs> it's still so cute. Are you okay? Just... dandy. Was I not supposed to read it? Yeah, I'm so... Uh... No, no, you're fine. It's not that. Uh... It's really not that, honest. Just... That research book happens to be written by yours truly. Oh. Oh! It's still a work in progress, though. Yeah, I'll keep working at it this week. That's really cool, Crow. I hope it goes well. Thank you. I can't help but wonder, though. Is the writing from research books normally that intense? Maybe he's just passionate about his work. By the way, if you're interested, I can show you some of my favorites later. Let's skip ahead... My god, man, I forgot how long day two to day three was. Uh, let's see, uh, are you sure I can have them? Thank you. Oh, I can accept it. I, are you sure I can have them? That's really kind of you, Crow, but are you sure I can have them? Aren't they important to you? I have quite a few pairs in my room. Don't worry about it, really. Besides, I think that color suits you more. Dear God, how does he do that? My cheeks are on freaking fire over here. I, uh, yeah. I clear my throat for a few seconds until I can finally muster something coherent. Thank you. You're very welcome. Now you won't be able to forget me. Yeah. Uh, well, I, uh... <laughs> oh my God, he got so red. Relax, I was just teasing you. 
Ha, yeah, I totally knew that. I didn't know that. Unless he's teasing about teasing. I'm teasing about teasing about teasing. God, I suck at being flirted with. And I'm 100% sure I wouldn't be able to forget him anyway. Not with that smile. All right, we heading out? Crow puts on his jacket and slides a drawstring over his bag. Uh, oh, his drawstring bag over his shoulder. I follow suit with my own jacket backpack and I skip ahead. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What, what did I just say? I mean, you're even more interested in me? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Hmm. Really now? Crow leans in. He looks me right in the eye. Do you mind being a little more specific? Ah! Ha! Aspen's bad flirting tip number one. When unsure what to say, just laugh like an idiot. Mm -hmm. Well, you're very, um, mysterious. Curious. He leans back. Very curious. I feel like I've forgotten how to breathe. Alrighty. Let's get going, yeah? And skip ahead. Ooh. My god, I got hungry. I don't hate being here. Crow is nice. Really nice. I still miss my home, though. But what can I do? The bus won't come until all the snow is removed. With my luck, just to say there won't be another snowstorm. I don't really have a choice right now. And we skip ahead. I don't really care much about Rory. Um, stay still and close my eyes. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Could it be? I feel his thumb touch my cheek right below my eye until... Ah! He removes his hand. Huh? Hmm. There! Got it! Sorry about that. You had an eyelash on your face. Oh. Hmm? Huh? What is it? Ah, perhaps... Were you expecting something else? Who? Me? Ch Perish the thought! I was, uh... Holy, I really was. I see. Yeah, I wouldn't believe me either. Anyway, let's skip ahead till something different happens. Surely something's about to happen. I don't think everything he said was a lie. No matter how good of a liar you are, you can't hide your whole personality. Inevitably, some parts will slip out. For him to be so desperate, something bad must be happening. He's just going about the solution the wrong way. But maybe, nah, definitely, there's something I can do. I just need to find the best opportunity. And for that, I need more information. And I skip ahead. I'm pretty sure he already met the crow. All right, and over here I say we both said too much. I'm sorry too. It's true that I started it. Really caught me off guard, you know. I'm so... That was much better. I so said too much. I'm sorry, crow. And thank you for apologizing. Of course. I just wish you wouldn't lie to me either. No matter how much I like you. Whatever we have going on right now won't end well if there's no mutual trust. Either way, we'll skip ahead. I'm pretty sure the next thing that's different is on day six. All right. Okay, I already saw all that. Oh! Ha! Huh. Relationships shouldn't be built on lies. You said I lied to you before, didn't you? Well, I'll cut to the chase. You're right. I did lie. But so have you. You have lied to me many, many times. About Winter Hollow being an inhabited village. About a bus ever coming by. About what th the real dangers I'm facing in this place is. Because I think it's less about the weather and more about the chit-chat from a certain talking bird. Crow, relationships shouldn't be built on lies. I... If you really, truly care about me, tell me what's going on. And we'll skip ahead. I hope we're able to talk better tomorrow. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. Until I get some answers, at least. I don't know I can leave anyway with the hellish snowstorm outside. Still, I wish we lived closer to each other. Yeah, <sighs> let's skip. Crow hasn't told me anything yet, but he didn't have to. His reaction said plenty. Even so, I still do want to know what's going on here. The deserted village. The strange symbol in the snow. The crow of red eyes. I have a feeling it's all connected. And so is Crow, one way or another. Whatever happens... I'll make sure I find all the answers, for my sake, and his as well. Day 7. Is this still gonna be the same? <sighs> Anyone who says sleep is for the week doesn't know the pain of insomnia. I'm glad I could get four hours at least, especially with everything that has happened. Supernatural or not, Crow definitely has a few red flags. I'm not stupid. But there's no denying he's suffering as well, and... Same can be said for me. Maybe that's why I feel so connected to him, in spite of everything else we're both hurting. 
We both want good company. Someone we can be ourselves with. I just can't forget how happy you looked that night when you told me he wasn't lonely anymore. I think the reason why I dropped the plate was because deep inside, I felt the same. I feel the same. But we can't really ignore the big elephant in the room, can we? This place is something to you. Something that's not quite right. And it's not just a supernatural. Being isolated from the whole world for a long time isn't healthy. I can't help Crow with all he's dealing with. I have my own demons to fight. I can at least help him get out of here. I have to talk to him now. Without wasting another moment, I head to the cabin's hallway. Yo, Crow! It's earlier than usual, but Crow should have woken up by now. I'll try the kitchen first. Crow! He's not here. That's odd. Did he go to the living room? Not here either. Maybe he's taking a shower? I'm just gonna barge into the bathroom! Yo, Crow! Are you in here? Oh, my lord! Oh, we are not here. Did something happened to him. Why do I feel so uneasy? I give my cheeks a few slaps. Stop overthinking, Aspen. This is not the time. See? His jacket is right here. Let's go to his room first. He could be sleeping. I take a few steps forward and stop right in front of his door. Crow, you awake? Silence. One more time. Crow? Alright, we're back here. For the first time since I came here, I finally get a glimpse of Crow's room. It's packed with books, research papers, and even cupboards with jars full of medicine, plants, and what looks to be herbal creams. It has the same type of wooden walls I've become familiar with throughout the week. And the easel lying against the window suggests Crow must be the one who made all the paintings in the cabin, including the ones in my room. I stand on matches, take a closer look at a painted crow and snowdrop flowers. His art skills are amazing. I bet he drew the crow from the books he left me too. He's not here either. And it must be... Huh? My foot hit something under the bed. I crouch and take what looks to be another one of his paintings. This... Well, eyes on a canvas is none other than... Me. Crow. I feel my eyes watering, but I... Don't let the tears fall just yet. I put the canvas back under the bed. When I stand up straight once again, I notice an open book on top of the light table. A book of red cover. I was so focused on the paintings that I didn't notice. Isn't this the one I skimmed a few days ago? Crow must have brought it back here. It did say it wasn't finished yet. The Red Scavenger's Blood Pact. I see. So that's what the Red-Eyed Crow is called. Rule 1. You must not tamper with the sacred symbol, nor the force field. Doing so will, will result in your death. Ugh. Well, I'm alive, so this must apply to the person who did the pact in the first place. I did get a bit thrown around, though. Rule 2. You must provide human offerings to the scavengers at every full moon, or once their satiety of the previous offering subsides. So there's more than one crow, then. Rule 3. You shan't let any scavengers perish from lack of offerings. The responsibility to keep them fed lies upon you. Failure to do so will result in your death. Rule 4. You must not harm the Red King. Doing so will break the pact, but also result in your death. Oh my god. Don't tell me... I have to leave. Now! Why does this feel like a bad ending? You know, to putting on my jacket and gloves, I head towards the cabin's front door. I inspect the blue fabric first. No. My heart beats faster. I feel like I can't breathe. This... It's in the jacket he always wears. How could I have been so stupid? It's Crow. Of course he will pull something like this. Although I know it's futile, I grab the door handle and pull with all my strength. And I'm locked in. No, 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 no. Don't panic. Let's just try the living room window. And I'm still locked in. Ah. And of course this doesn't work. It won't open. Yeah, it goes through all the rooms. I go through all the windows. But no matter how hard I pull, no matter how hard I try, not a single one of them opens. I kick the front door. God damn it! What do I do? What do I do now? At this rate, Crow will... He'll... I feel my eyes watering again. Only this time, my knees give up and I crumple to the floor. Crow. Crow! I cry. I sob. I wail. Unable to compose myself. Unable to muffle my screams. It's gonna die. Also, like... 
can I just mention, like, yeah, I know this is supposed to be a very emotional moment, but in the back of my head, I'm just thinking that, like, Asmund is just rolling on the floor, crying, throwing up, <laughs> and just, it's just such a funny, like, image to me. He's gonna die, and I can't do anything to stop it. Ah, what is? Huh? I looked down at where I just stepped. When I fall into my knees earlier, I accidentally moved the edge of the carpet. I stepped on the floor once again. It sounds hollow. Trap door? Is this what I think it is? Holy. It's a pantry. A pantry in the basement. Uh, of course, Crow would have this. I wonder, does it have another door? It does! I guess this answers my question. Okay, time to go. For real. Yeah. 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 The more I run, the more feathers and blood I see scattered in the snow. Yeah. 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 Several scavengers. Vulnerable. Exposed. Lifeless. I guess the pack didn't say they could perish in other ways. Still, this is too much. When I arrive, Crow is holding a knife in his hand. The red-eyed bird stares at him without so much as blinking. You are making a grave mistake. On the contrary, I should have done this a while ago. Because I'm done with your bull, Rory. Crow! What? What are you doing here? What? What do you mean, what am I doing here? I've been looking for you everywhere. You shouldn't have. You were supposed to stay in a cabin. God, why do you have to be so stubborn? It's all meaningless if you're... Shut up! Just shut up already! I've had it with your lives. Your evasive answers and extreme ways to keep me safe. You never tell me anything. Did my words yesterday be nothing to you? No. I... You always, always do what you think is best for me. But not once have you stopped to consider what I'd say, have you? Yeah, I feel my eyes sting. Oh, no. Crow is great. Crow is perfect. Of course he knows what's best for little old Aspen. My vision starts to get blurry. Surely Aspen won't mind. Surely Aspen will appreciate it. It's for their sake, after all. It's another teardrop threatens to roll down my cheek. I hide my face in my hands. Frick. Aspen. Please. Tell me something. What would you dying even accomplish? You'd be set free. And how is sacrificing yourself gonna set me free? Crow doesn't answer. I don't want that. I really, really don't want that. That is not how you solve problems. He still doesn't answer. Instead, he clenches his fist. There's this word I'm sure you're familiar with, seeing how you're so knowledgeable. I start getting closer. Or perhaps I need to remind you of it. And closer. Because I have this teeny tiny suspicion that the meaning might have slipped your mind. And closer. It's called freaking communication! Until I'm at a close enough distance to hug him with all my might. Aspen. His hands fidget in the air. <sighs> I'm really sorry. You're right. You're right about everything. It's just, when I thought about what they might do to you, I completely lost it. Why did you keep it to yourself? Why indeed. I guess it's a reflex at this point. A reflex? I'm so used to handling things myself that I just never thought you would care enough to trust me. You're different from anyone I've ever met. And I, I don't think you would have rejected me entirely, but I... I was scared. He doesn't need to say it aloud. His whole demeanor is proof enough. I squeeze Crow's back, although he still doesn't hug me. I feel his hands touching my shoulders. I'm sorry. I'm such a mess. Yeah. You are. I don't think I've ever met someone with this many red flags and green flags as him. You are a mess. Yeah. But so am I. Just as I can't fix you, you can't fix me either. I look him in the eye. We can't try to heal together. I mean, we can try to heal together. One step at a time. Aspen. Look, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. I know we haven't known each other for that long. 
I know it, and yet I haven't felt as close to another person as I've felt with you. Maybe it's cheesy to say this, but these past few days, I feel like we formed a connection. I... I love you, Crow. I need you here. Alive. Let's figure this out together. Please. Okay. There's no more hesitation when I feel his arms wrap around my back. Okay, Aspen. Really? After a small pause, Crow pulls back gently. He brings his hands to my face and wipes a tear from my cheek. Cross my heart and hope to die. Well, maybe not the die part. I laugh. He starts leaning in. I close my eyes and feel his lips pressed to mine. You know, all this is happening while the crow is still watching us, by the way. I don't know how, I don't know how Rory feels. Okay. We smile and touch our foreheads together. Are you quite done? <laughs> Rory, we're having a moment. Oh my god, I forgot he was here. Uh, yeah. Good. Now, what is it you intend to do after you cease your murdering spree? Huh. So you're finally done then. And what of you, human? You never, you never even cared to heed my warnings. I think the word you're looking for is manipulation. I see it now. What you were trying to do. You want to keep me out of the house so I could die in the blizzard. Then, the next day, Crow would find me and be completely devastated. Finished the contract himself, killing two birds with one stone. The irony. You know my words about him being a liar were the truth, though. Do you not? He still provided us with human offerings. He probably intended to do the same with you at some point. Perhaps he did not need to kill them himself, seeing as the snowstorms did the work for him, but he still prepared the meat. That just means he's a good chef. I think back to the past few- Wait a minute, have I been eating survivors? I mean, not survivors, they're dead. I mean, I guess, like, the snow would've, like, uh, had the snow and the cold would've, like, helped preserve the meat, but, like, the meat! The meat! What was I eating? Crow's lies. Crow's evasiveness when talking about certain topics. His research, his adamant behavior to keep me safe, his hesitant and painful gaze. The feelings of being watched, the eternal winter, the abandoned village, the blood pact itself. Yes, Rory. Yeah, I know. And seeing how the amount of people coming to this area was getting lower and lower, you both must have been desperate. Do I think it was right? No, I don't. But I think back again. The warmth of Crow's food, the way his eyes twinkle when he's happy, the way his cheeks blush when he's feeling shy, the way he smiles at me. But that is something for him and I to talk about and solve ourselves. So it's none of your goddamn business! Rory pauses for a moment before answering. Quite a feisty one, are you not? We can agree to that, at least. Indeed. Uh, I gonna lie, Rory. I kinda expected more backlash. Don't crows usually care about what happens to the flock? Perhaps. But as I'm sure you have noticed, I am no crow. At least not entirely. While I indeed cared for my brothers and sisters, what's done is done. Partaking in a battle I can't win would be a waste of my time and their memory. I guess I understand where it's coming from, but where does that leave crow and me? What will you do now? Rory sighs and gazes at one of the nearby trees. There's no point in me remaining in Winter Hollow. It does not provide as many offerings anymore. Therefore, I think it is time for me to migrate to a different area altogether. Wait, this is a good ending? He turns back to us once again. Bird, demon, or human, one has to learn to adapt. So, no more partial migration? No more partial migration. Wait a second, what about the blood pact? The symbol? The, the symbol? The force field? It will all be nullified the moment I take flight. Will that hurt Crow? I hold Crow's hand and interlock his fingers with mine. He squeezes back. It will not kill him if that is what you're afraid of. I breathe a sigh of relief. However, he will still have to suffer the consequences of his actions. A deal with a demon is no joke. 
Once the pact is nullified, it will remove whatever he gained from it. I think you probably have an idea of what it is, do you not? I feel Crow's gaze on me. It glows red, charming yet mysterious, and I can't look away. His red eyes. There were a few times when I was outside a cabin and you weren't with me. I felt someone's presence. Someone was watching me. That was you, wasn't it? Yeah. That is correct. Does that mean his eyes will go back to the way they were before? Or will he become blind? Not completely blind. I... Oh, oh that's Crow. Not completely blind. I will only be able to see red. Well, black, white, and red to be more specific. A bit ironic if you think about it. Still is the price to pay for messing with the supernatural. But you won't be able to see nature in the same way ever again. Don't worry, Aspen. I'm fine with it. Really. Alright. That is not all he will lose. What? There's more? What what else did he ask for? Knowledge. N knowledge. Knowledge about nature. What? But- Mind you, not what I can learn myself from books and my own observation. But, as you know, there is a limit to what one can learn from this alone. It will never compare to what it's like to receive information directly from the source. Information that no human could possibly achieve by regular means. You're really willing to give all that away. Crow looks surprised for a second. But almost immediately, his expression changes to that of a smile. Don't worry about it. Besides, don't you think it's more exciting to discover new things and have all sorts of experiences? Yeah, I'm going to quit my job. Really? Yeah. I'm going to quit my job and do something I really want to do in my life. Crow! I want to do Crow! <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. I'm kidding. Jesus Christ. Don't don't actually don't actually loot Crow. Uh, like, the developer is specifically, like, not really comfortable with that. Maybe move to a different neighborhood or new area, even. Will you come with me? Crow caresses the back of my hand with his thumb. Always. Tightening the grip on our hands, we take one last glance at Rory, the former Red King, before he takes off. A cerulean blue paints the sky. It makes it seem rejuvenated. No clouds, no gray. Just a touch of the breeze. It's... But is it really the same sky, if the people who look at it have changed? What do the birds who migrate think about when flying in its currents? What do they feel as they follow the wind that will take them to a new home? Perhaps we're not so different from animals. There will always be uncertainty in the decisions we make. There will always be annoying feeling of dread. But it is in those times when having someone by your side Somebody you can share your true self with will remind you of one very important thing. You are not alone. You are never alone. Okay, so now we're going down the Andre ending, and for that, we're basically gonna be as, like, suspicious as possible, or, like, hostile. So, I'm fine, but you shouldn't have changed my clothes. I'm fine, but I don't think you should have changed my clothes. Uh... Oh, God. I'm so sorry about that. Normally, I would ask for permission, but... You had just passed out and was an emergency. He's, uh, he had a point. I hate to admit it, but if he hadn't helped me, I'd be counting worms. Ah, uh, you're right. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. I'm just glad you're okay. He's kind of cute, not gonna lie. If you don't mind my asking, can you tell me what happened? How did you get caught in the snowstorm? I'm gonna skip ahead. Okay, uh, I'd rather not eat anything right now. <sighs> okay, that's a shame. Wait, what? A shame? Why would it be a shame? I was looking forward to cooking for you. What? I said that you probably haven't eaten anything since yesterday. He's not wrong, but... It's okay. I had a pretty good meal yesterday before getting in my car. Thank you for the offer, though. Well, alright, but will you at least eat some lunch later? Won't you? Uh, sure. <laughs> Great! I can't wait. Can't wait to cook for some stranger? This guy sure has some weird priorities. Just as a heads up, is there anything you can't eat? Yeah, I'm good with it. It'll be so funny to say I'm a vegan. But I'm good with anything. Yeah, I'm good with anything. Thanks. And we're gonna skip. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea. 
as much as I want to. I don't think Crow would appreciate that. Or maybe he would smile and say he doesn't mind. He does seem pretty hospitable so far. Nah, bad Aspen. It'd still be super rude. Besides, for all I know, he could turn into someone else the moment I mess with his stuff without permission. Breakfast is ready! Hmm? Did you wait long? Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah. All right, there we skip. Huh? Crow places a plate of scrumptious looking pancakes on the table. For a moment, I think he made them for me, despite what I told him before. Until he sinks his fork into the fluffy batter that is. I see you looking. Did you change your mind about wanting to eat? No, I... Oh, oh no. <laughs> God damn it, stomach. Don't betray me now. I brought an extra plate and fork, just in case. He gestures to his side, where there is, in fact, an extra plate and a fork. I can't believe I was so distracted by the pancakes that I didn't notice them. It's not like I haven't eaten in three days. Jeez. I'm fine. Don't mind me. Oh. Maybe you should mind. Uh, Crow covers his mouth, and I can see his shoulders shaking. You were saying? Ah, darn. Without another word to add, I pick up the fork and I grab the dish that Crow conveniently slid next to me. The fluffy texture of the pancakes, combined with the juiciness of the berries and the floral and sweet taste of the honey, sends me right to heaven. So much for not wanting to eat anything. I can't stop. In less than five minutes, the pancakes are no more. <laughs> Looks like someone was hungry after all. Ugh, that's embarrassing. What am I, a kid? Sorry about that. Got a bit distra- Got a bit too excited. Nothing to be sorry about. I'm happy you liked them so much. They were fantastic. I never had the honey this good. What type of honey is it? This is spring wildflower honey. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful how the flavor and color can change so much depending on the time of the year it's harvested? Definitely. It also depends on the flowers the bees collect the nectar from. That's so cool! I'd love to try the other types of honey. Don't forget the chaga tea, though. It'll warm you right up. Yeah, I take the mug of chaga tea and rest my cheek on the ceramic. I'm gonna skip ahead. Uh, and I will protest the nickname. Please, could you maybe not call me that? You don't really know each other that well, so it's kinda... Uh... Oh god, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It was completely out of line, wasn't it? Hey, hey, it's okay. You don't need to apologize so much. No, no, I get it. I just have this weird, uh, habit of giving pet names to the people I like. Did he just say he likes me? Even though we just met, I still would appreciate it if you didn't call me that. Please. I understand. Thank you. Would others think this is excessive? It's not like I'm gonna see this guy ever again after I get to Frostpeak Town. And yet, I still don't want someone I barely know to call me that. I have to be true to myself. I had two teaspoons of sugar and stir, and I skip ahead. All right, I'm just gonna say I'm not sure here. I know, I'm not sure. Crow doesn't answer right away. <sighs> Instead, he lets out a deep sigh and avoids look at me, as if he was disappointed. He crosses his arms. He fidgets with his braid. He bites his lip. Once he's satisfied, he makes eye contact once again. The way he stares at me is so icy, it leaves me petrified. You're not sure. Then what are you sure about? What do you intend to do? What could you possibly do in this kind of situation, other than what I had just suggested? Because I can assure you, there aren't many other options. Unless freezing to death is in your plans. Which, by the way, almost happened yesterday. Why is he being so hostile all of a sudden? Maybe it's because I've been so rude to him this whole time! Oh my god, dude, can you chill the hell out? I can assure you, I'm quite calm. It's you who's not thinking clearly. I just said I wasn't convinced, not that I wouldn't stay. I kind of like to keep my options open, okay? And, you know, not feeling like I'm being forced into something I don't want to do. Making decisions at a heat of a moment is generally not a good idea. <sighs> nah, nah, you're right. I acted out of line. It's just, I'm worried about you. How many people come around these parts? It'd be too risky for you to leave right now. Especially when you don't know the area. And I hope you like to stay for a little while longer. I really don't like the idea of staying with a stranger. A pushy one at that. But he's making a good... No, great point. I don't have much of a choice here. I mean, what else can I do? Hitchhike? When I saw literally no cars around after driving for hours? Oh yeah, sounds like a real winner, Aspen. No. It's either staying here or freezing in the cold. And I want that even less. 
He did help me, so I'm still willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe. Hopefully. He's not so bad. I'll stay. Huh? What? I'll stay. Uh... Now you're just saying that. I'm serious. I'll really stay. For now. Really? Cross my heart and hope to die. Well, maybe not the die part. <laughs> Crow laughs. Alrighty. In any case, thank you for letting me stay. It's my pleasure. We're going to have so much fun you'll never want to leave. But I already wanted to leave! Yeah, stop teasing my stop teasing me like that, or I might just believe you. Yeah, I'll go wash the dishes. I'm gonna skip ahead. Uh we're in day two. I'm gonna quickly put the book away. Better not risk it. Yeah, I don't know why, but that book gave me the chills. Thanks for waiting, Aspen. Yeah, no problem. Hmm. Is something wrong? You seem a bit tense all of a sudden. Frick. Curse my inability to put on a poker face. Think of something, Aspen. Quick! Uh, I was just thinking, you have a lot of books. Ah, do you perhaps like reading? Feel free to read any you like. Most of them are research-oriented, though, so I'm not sure if you'll be interested. Have you written any of them? I once heard researchers document their studies. Uh... They're a work in progress. I wonder if he wrote the red book I found before. You don't say... By the way, if you're interested, I can show you some of my favorites later. And just skipping ahead. Uh, come on, day three. We're in day three. Morning, Aspen. And skip ahead. Uh, let's see. Uh, thank you. I can't accept them. Are you sure I can have them? I can't accept them. I'm sorry, Crow, but I can't accept these. Yeah, I'll be sure to return them to you once we're back. Huh? But why? Do you hate them that much? What? No, no, it's just... Well, please don't take this personally, but I'm not very good with surprise gifts, especially when there's no real reason to receive them. You know, I know at least one person out there who, like, would unironically go down this route. Like, specifically, like, all the choices needed for the Yandere ending. And not because he likes Yandere's, but specifically because he just doesn't trust people. A real reason? Like what? You know, like a birthday or something? Celebrations and all that jazz. <sighs> I can't say I understand it very well. Does there need to be such a specific reason to give someone a gift? I just thought it'd make you happy so to say you didn't have your gloves with you. And I appreciate the gesture, Crow. I mean it. I just really can't accept them. If that's how you feel, then I won't force you. Thank you. Of course. Crow puts on his jacket and slides a drawstring bag over his shoulder. I follow suit with my own jacket and a backpack. Alrighty. Now we're definitely ready. That we are. He takes his keys from his pants pocket and locks the front door, and we skip ahead. Does that mean you're even more interested in me? Well, no comment. No comment. I see. Well, no matter. I can't help but feel like he's disappointed. But how was I supposed to answer that? Alrighty. Let's get going, yeah? And let's skip ahead. Believe me, I really want to. Crow is nice, sure, but maybe a little too nice. Can't complain about his cooking skills, though. Still, it's, uh... I don't know how to explain it. It's weird. Not to mention, sometimes he seems kind of desperate. Yeah, it's... whatever. I mean, the bus won't come until all the snow is removed anyway, so... Don't really have a choice if I don't want to freeze to death. Yeah. Why am I talking to a crow? Not sure what I expected. I cannot be trusted. I, I get it. I get it. We're skipping ahead. All right. He's coming real close to us. So I'm going to slap his hand away. Um, what are you doing? Also, <laughs> can I just say, I love the fact that in this particular round, every time you make these decisions, he's got this incredulous look on his face. It's just amazing. Uh, Sorry, you had an eyelash under your eye. So I just, you could have just told me, you know, I couldn't get it myself. I feel my face with my fingers until I find a thin little hair that doesn't belong. There, I got it. You certainly did. Anyway, we're skipping ahead. And uh, let's see. Given my circumstances, I shouldn't get on this bad side. At least not until I'm sure I can leave this place. He clearly showed me his true colors yesterday. So I'll be on my best behavior. Until a chance to escape presents itself. For now, I'll keep my eyes open and wait patiently. The opportunity will come. 
And for that, I need more information. And we skip ahead. Ah, <sighs> well, Espen, it's fine. At least you apologized. I feel so bad for being so mean. It's fine, Crow. At least you apologized. Don't know how sincere that apology was, though. For all I know, it could be another attempt to manipulate me. Ah. <sighs> It's the least I could do. It's really not, but let's not disturb the peace just yet. If I say what I'm actually thinking right now, things will backfire. I need to be patient for now. Either way, let's skip. I release myself from his grasp and push him away. Crow. Uh, I want you... To, uh, stop trying to manipulate me. What I want is for you to stop manipulating me. You got a lot of nerve to call me a liar, you freaking hypocrite. Farmers living in Winter Hollow? A bus coming by when the snow's been removed? Oh, and let's not forget your friend, the talking bird. Let me guess. Are you two in cahoots? Planning to sacrifice me to the devil or something? Aspen. Well, what's the matter? Nothing to say, huh? Too much honesty for you? I need to think. All right, then we'll skip ahead. He didn't seem too worried about leaving me alone just now. I guess I can't really run away when there's a dreadful blizzard out there. I'm getting the hell out of here the moment it stops. No matter what. Yeah. There's gotta be a way to escape Winter Hollow. Earlier today, the Red-Eyed Crow was very insistent on covering the strange symbol from me. As if he were afraid I might touch it. I still don't know what the symbol does, but I have a feeling it's the key to leaving this place. Whatever happens, I'll make sure this nightmare ends tomorrow. Day 7 Yeah, I didn't sleep a wink. How could I when I know there's a maniac just a few rooms away? Guarding the room's door, it was a must. Yeah, I'm glad it stopped snowing at least. No signs of another blizzard coming either. I look at my backpack. It's not filled to the brim, but still full nonetheless. Still, I hadn't been able to sleep anyway. I made the most of my time by packing my clothes and a few other things. This had included my water bottle, the knife I picked up yesterday, a couple of granola bars from the kitchen, and gloves. Yeah, <sighs> guess I'm keeping them after all, huh? Whatever. No time for sentimentality. If I'm going to escape, it has to be now. Aspen, are you awake? Ah, God damn it! Can we talk? There's something really important I have to tell you. Too late for that now, crow boy. Guess you're still mad at me, huh? Listen, I'll be waiting in the living room, alright? Huh. God damn it, of course he's gonna wait over there. Can't have me leaving through the window again, can he? I mean, I could always force the keyhole from the entrance with my knife, but... Nah, it will make a lot of noise and Crow will catch me before I even manage to break it. I'll have to escape from the window in this room. It's smaller, a bit higher than the one in the living room, and let's not forget, much sturdier too, the Aspen from two nights ago did not appreciate almost breaking their hands. Basically, it's a pain to open. I've got no other choice. It's the only way. Yeah... Gotta pray it has a similar system to the living room's window. I don't want to resort to a plan B this early on. No more dawdling, Aspen. The faster I get out of this cabin, the better. I put on my jacket and get to work. Oh, it worked! Oh, it worked! Once my feet touch the snow, I break into a run. <sighs> Yeah. Okay, I've arrived at a place where I found that strange symbol. That has to be the key to getting out. No doubt about it. Carefully, I take a few minutes to search every nook and cranny in the area surrounding me. Just to be safe, I made sure to check more than once. Heck, I even crawl on all fours despite the ground being freezing. I'm that desperate. Frick. Frick! Where the hell is it? I bite my glove thumb. Think, Aspen. What are you forgetting? Think! Does it have anything to do with the red-eyed crow? Yesterday, I vaguely remember that the symbol suddenly disappeared after it flew off. A swift flapping noise makes me look up. Ah! <sighs> Although the fade and misty air prevents me from fully distinguishing the silhouettes in the trees, I can still make out the several pairs of red eyes staring at me. Of course, the damn bird has friends! I don't know if it's intuition, self-preservation, instinct, or sixth sense, but everything in my body tells me to get out of there pronto. 
Yeah, I stayed there way too long. Crow definitely knows I left already. I gotta go back to the cabin. Where do I go? Due to a long bout of unprecedented weather, this area has been closed up to public. That's right, Winter Hollow Village. Most, if not all of the houses look pretty run down, but maybe, just maybe I can use one of them as a hiding spot until I figure out how to leave this place. I might even find some more clues. Didn't have much of a chance before the blizzard and all. Right as I finish mulling the start over, a sun chill running up the back of my neck gives me shivers. It's familiar, yet it's unsettling, like the weird sensation of deja vu. The unmistakable, relentless feeling that I'm being watched, that I'm being mocked for having the slightest bit of hope. You won't escape. You'll never escape. But there's the red-eyed crows, somehow sending me a telepathic message. My own negative thoughts or something else entirely. I'm not sure. Whichever it is, I don't care. I reject them all the same. Won't escape, huh? We'll see about that. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Good. Seems I'm not too late. The signs of any type of crow, bird, or human. The village looks exactly like it did yesterday. Sinister and devoid of any souls. I can still hide in one of the houses. Maybe even find some clues if I'm lucky. I hug myself and rub my arms vigorously. It's getting colder. You got this, Aspen. It's gotta be okay. There's no way of knowing if that's true, but I say the words out loud, both to encourage and calm myself down. I better hide uh, the one that's furthest away from Crow's cabin. Still, I have to inspect the other houses too to see if I find anything. I walk to the first house. Nothing. Not even furniture inside. The second house isn't fair any better. It has a couple of chairs at least, but nothing even remotely similar to a clue that could help me. The cycle continues. House 3 and 4 are quite similar to the second one. A few worn out tables that have seen better days. Chairs so rotten they are probably not even suitable for sitting on. A very, very old hearth. Houses number 4 did have a desk with drawers, but nothing really of note was inside of them. God, it's getting colder. Better eat something to get some warmth. I grabbed two granola bars from my backpack and scarfed them down. Yeah. That hit the spot. Snowflake, where are you? I told you not to call me Snowflake! Right as about to leave house number four, I hear the distant yet palpable voice of the man I'm running away from. Aspen? Oh, God. It's getting closer. Almost as if it was some sort of ritual after how many times I've done it by now. I leave through one of the windows and stay out the front door. Ah! Unfortunately, because of my urgency, I don't notice the wooden fence right below and up crashing into it. Hmm. There you are. No, oh, no. <sighs> it breaks my heart that you go so far as escape from the cabin after everything I did for you. Not to mention how dangerous it is to wander by yourself. Oh, yeah, because the holy mother of lettuce here isn't dangerous at all. I just wanted to talk, yeah? God, just... Just leave me alone. How did she even find me so quickly? This area is huge. Crow does an answer right away. Crow? Instead, he paces around for a few seconds. And stops right in front of me once again. How indeed. I hate being a party pooper. I'm a little disappointed you're asking that when you figure out so much already, Snowflake. His voice is playful, but there's a certain edge to it that chills me to the bone. His eyes are cold, even colder than the frosty winter air. Not that it will change anything, but, well, if you must know, a little birdie told me. <laughs> His eyes! Run. Run, Aspen, move your legs, you have to stand up! Hmm. Or perhaps saying they showed me will be more accurate, I guess. Yeah, well, details. I kick and flail repeatedly in, in an embarrassing attempt to get up from the ground, but to no avail. He even tried to reach my backpack to take out the knife, which shouldn't even take more than five seconds. Seems like an impossible feat. What's happening? Why don't I have any strength? <laughs> Would you look at that? It seems the opium poppies are already kicking in. Opium poppies? When, when did you drug me? What? Snowflake, sweetheart. You really thought I wouldn't notice you stealing food from the kitchen. I figured you'd grab something easy to manage, like the granola bars you stole yesterday. I couldn't be sure which snacks you end up choosing, so... I just added the powder to all of them. Oh my god, you drugged me! 
Shrugged is a very strong word. Yeah, I'm just putting you to sleep for a little while. I feel myself getting weaker. And from the look at your face, it seems I wouldn't have to wait much longer. And weaker. <laughs> to think a little plan could be so powerful, so intense. And weaker. To the point where it hurts to keep my eyes open. Isn't nature just amazing? <laughs> the last thing I hear before passing out is the howling winter air and the sound of crow's maniacal laughter. Well, where's this going to take us? I know you're excited. I'm excited too. I mean, hell, we're all excited for this. Ah, uh, my head's killing me. What happened? Oh, we're back in his bedroom. That's fine. It's totally fine. Huh? This is... I find myself surrounded by the same type of wooden walls as the one from the room I stayed in the past few days. Unlike my previous chamber, so this bedroom has a lot of books and what well, looks like research papers to the point where it could be said it's a little messy. Even the desert at the far end is drowned in them. A couple of paintings made the place look slightly more cheerful, but not by much. The most distinguishable ones are the crow paintings, and the one with a couple of white flowers that reminds me of snowdrops. What makes the room look rather sinister is the odd choice of jars. Jars containing herbs and other medicinal plant stuff. Good morning, sleepyhead. Hmm? How do you feel? Although I tried to move away from him immediately, my body has different plans. Ah. <sighs> God! <laughs> Feisty, aren't we? Sorry to say you won't be able to move much right now, Snowflake. Don't you dare call me that, you lettuce! What the hell did you do to me? Ah, nothing much. Just a little guarantee that you'll be running away the moment you wake up. Again, I might add. So he drugged me. Great. Again, might I add. I'm glad I still had some powder left from the last batch I made. Tying people up is not really my style, you see. I spit in his face. Well, I'll be! That's not very nice! Crow wipes his cheek. At least wait until I get a test tube, yes? Wouldn't want to waste it. And puts my spit inside a small glass container. <sighs> I couldn't wait to analyze this. I wonder how many amylase you have. You're sick in the head! Am I? Ugh. I guess love makes you do crazy things. This is a first for me. Oh, come on. You're making me sad, Snowflake. Won't you give me an answer to my confession of love? This isn't love! It's pure obsession! Is that so? I'm afraid I don't see the difference. For God's sake! If this... If this is how you treat people you love... I don't want to know what you do to people you hate. People I hate? People? <laughs> Crow bites his lips, barely able to contain his laughter. That depends on what you consider to be people. No. No, surely you're pulling my leg here. Well, I may have ensured no one would bother us, be it people or... Something else entirely. I feel the color leave my face. Even though I'm certain they weren't on my side either. This is not what I wanted. My stomach does a flip. Did you... Do something to the crows? <laughs> Crow roars with laughter. Not be able to contain it any longer. I had no choice, Snowflake. They wanted to take you away from me. Can you believe it? They actually had enough to demand I give you to them. Those abominations aren't even real crows! What an insult to Mother Nature! <laughs> the Red King should really have thought the blood packed over. It's his own fault for not knowing who he was messing with. In any case, I'm sure he got the message by now. Not like he could leave my pantry anyway. I bet he's glad he doesn't have to share food with his siblings. Crow approaches the bed and puts his hand on either side of my head. You don't have to worry about anything. I'll protect you. I'll take care of you. Always. What? Forever. And always. <laughs> and that's exactly what we wanted. <laughs>
Anyway, that was where Winter Crows go. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys do want to play this for yourselves, the game will be in the description below. Personally, I did like Crow's redesign. I feel like he's a lot more sinister in this one. And I really wasn't expecting like the twist at the end of the story. Um, and I got to say like all the endings, like they go hard in their own respective ways. Like um, there's a little bit of something for everyone, depending on like which route you prefer to go down. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion. Signing off. Ciao.